Good to go. How about okay. you, Steve? Good morning. I'm Steve Thompson. I'm president of Emory Thompson Machinery, and I want to welcome you all. I know you've come from some distances, and thank you all for being here. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to uh, start talking about Italian ice uh, first off. Uh, those of you who have seen my 311 videos that Jeff and I have produced, uh, a lot of them you see uh, Samantha Jane Thompson in them, our golden retriever. Um, my accountant the other day was complaining about me uh, deducting some of her food and putting it off to uh, security, you know, right? Uh, you know, and the, you know what the way accountants are. And he said, "Since when is a gold retriever security?" So, being a businessman, I did the only thing that made good sense. I enrolled her in police training. So that's where she is right now. She's well, she's also training. a sales dog. Yeah, she's a, you know, that's right. She's a sales dog too. But she's off in police training, and will be here about one o'clock. Uh, she, she trains with a bunch of uh, German Today shepherds. she's learning to bite. <laughs> well, not only on call. <laughs> I, I just came down from New York. I was up there for a weekend, or for a weekday, doing a quick turnaround trip. And uh, in New York City, they had a, a small dog, and it was a security dog uh, in the TSA line. And it was walking around, sniffing everybody, and the dog comes over and sniffs me, and then walks away with the, the trainer. And, uh, then uh, she and the dog come back a second time, and then a third time, and all of a sudden I can see from the peripheral there's people starting to move in on me because this dog has flagged me three times. Really? I turned to the lady and I said, I have a golden retriever. And she goes, oh, well that explains everything, and they walked <laughs> off. Is that true? Yeah, she, yeah, she was smelling uh, Samantha. I was telling you have a... So that's the thing, I tell them I have a golden retriever and I can walk right through. <laughs> you, they're going to arrest on the spot. <laughs> anyway, let's get down to business. Um, I'm going to pass out a formula for you. You're going to pass out? <laughs> it's going to be a long day, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and I have a lot of fun doing this. We only do it to entertain ourselves. And uh, the rest of everything else is peripheral. We do it on days there's nobody there we here. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and pretend that we're practicing. Um, I'm going to start with a lemon ice. Uh, I'm going to make uh, um, two ices today and one dairy-free ice cream. Uh, at this time of year, people are thinking about, uh, you know, getting gearing up for the summer and all. And Italian ices has become the largest segment of my business. Uh, people, uh, we've always had Italian ice in the north, it's very well known. But it's now moved into the south and it's now moving into uh, uh, quite a large number of the 171 countries that we sell our machines in around the world. Because, number one, it's inexpensive. Uh, and uh, that's, that's great because a wider segment of people can afford it. Uh, oftentimes an ice cream parlor should be in a, uh, a neighborhood with a higher income uh, so that people can afford uh, three, four, five dollars a scoop. Italian ice, uh, I can sell it in a foreign country for 50 cents and I'm making a 40 cent profit. So you price the product geared towards uh, you know, the market that you're selling it to. So that's really pretty good because it's, it's more profitable than coffee or anything else. Anything else. Anything else. And uh, it's, it's really, in the past 13 years since we moved down from New York, and I've, uh, I, I was kind of sequestered up in New York because, um, well, a lot of the ice is mob run, and they don't like secret formulas being given out. Oh, but cut this that. is cut that this, Yeah. <laughs> this is my secret formula for lemon ice. And the reason I use the lemon ice as a starter is, because I, I contend that uh, making ices and a lot of other products is mathematical. Uh, if you're going to, uh, if you ask me to bake uh, a birthday cake, I've never baked one, but I'll pick up uh, the joy of cooking and follow the directions. And it's going to say, in order for this to be uh, a birthday cake, it's going to have a certain amount of flour, a certain amount of sugar, um, and, uh, and water, and that's going to turn it in, and some vanilla extract, and that's going to turn it into a birthday cake. So if you tell me to make Italian ice, it's going to be a certain sugar and water ratio so that it freezes properly, and then the rest is all just flavor. So if we start with this formula, which is geared for the CB350, uh, two pounds of sugar, three and a half quarts of water, 16 to 24 ounces of lemon juice, and the zest of three lemons, you can then take that formula and go on to something else. Like let's say we're doing orange Italian ice. Um, orange, lemons are tart, oranges are sweet. 
So the oranges are bringing more sugar to the formula. The uh, water content will stay the same. We want a finished batch. Uh, the sugar content on the orange juice will actually drop a little bit. I'll put in less cane sugar because I'm getting sweetness from the oranges. But the mathematical ratio is there. So when someone says, uh, and, and I, I discourage them, and that's, that's a bad salesman in me, I tell them you know, they want to buy a machine now in February because they're going to open up in June and they want to practice all this time. I said, you don't need to practice. Uh, you've got your basic formula, and from there, you're just tweaking it as far as flavor. The sugar and water isn't going to change much, so how far can you go with lemon? Are we going to put in uh, 16 ounces of lemon or 24 ounces? You know, your formula will fall somewhere in there, and then it'll become your secret formula. So let me get that going. Uh, we'll use the CB350, which is, my guys have got it all set up for me. It's all been sanitized, ready to go. Make sure the gate's closed. So I'm going to measure out... Uh, three and a half quarts of water. <laughs> what do we have to measure? Three and a half quarts. This looks good. <laughs> or you can the dog use bowl. The dog bowl. this. We can use, okay. That's good. That's good. And it's a little hard to. Just go between proximate. three and four. Thank you. <laughs> there is no three. Now, while I'm doing this, a lot of people say, do you have to filter the water? Uh, well, the answer to that is yes and no. Um, here in central Florida, where we are in Brooksville, uh, we are famous for uh, cows, turkeys, uh, chickens, and armadillos. And, and that's about it. We don't have tourists. There's, there's nobody coming down from New York to visit sunny Brooksville, except for you folks. Um, so the people who grew up here, uh, and, and the water is like liquid rock. Uh, because it's going through all the minerals in the ground and the sand and all. It's, it's really pretty awful. Uh, but if you grew up here and you've lived here all your life, you don't know it's awful uh, because you're used to the taste from birth. You've been drinking this water. So uh, if I set up a lemon ice business here in Brooksville, I don't need to filter the water because I don't have tourists. I have just local people who are used to the water. They're not going to notice any difference whatsoever. But this theory that uh, in baking a bagel, you need New York water. Well, that's absolutely gospel. That's, that's true. But in Italian ice, you don't. Now, if my business was down in Naples, or if it was over in Miami, now I've got to filter the water. I want to take some of those minerals out of it, because everybody in Naples and Miami is a tourist. And they know what the New York, New England water tastes like. And so they, want it. they don't want any aftertaste in it. So uh, we don't have to filter the water today. But uh, depending on the location, uh, you might have to. And if you do, it's really not that hard. You get a Culligan water softener, and it takes care of all the problems. You don't need it. But really, uh, your flavor is going to so right. take care of everything that you're not going to have to do it. What do you do with these after I zest them? Uh, we, you take them, you, or no, you take them home and put them in your vodka tonic, Jeff. <laughs> OK. that's my water and the sugar is going right to be here. two pounds right? two pounds okay a two pound bag is still two pounds yes a five pound bag is four pounds a five pound bag is four pounds yeah so when you did you know that when you go to the supermarket uh, do we have one here it was here but a four it, it looks like a five pound bag but now it's yeah, four right pounds there on the scale yeah doesn't that look like a five pound bag of sugar that's four pounds. Uh, they've dropped it down by a whole pound. It's kind of like your coffee. On? There's no reaction. Is your mic working? That's okay. They're, they're still asleep. We'll, we'll wake them up later. Okay, so we've got the sugar and the water, and I'm going to find something to stir it with. Sugar dissolves very nicely in cold water. You don't have to use hot water. You don't have to go to any special efforts. All right, we'll use this. Oh, that's what I need. I'm killing myself with this little thing here. That, that one cost me a fortune. That's a fancy one. It's terrible. That's a special millennial uh, zester. That's the one you need. <laughs> now, the best one's the tower. The best is pre-bought. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I'll take that. Okay. Okay, so there's our sugar and water. And we're gonna pour this in. Oh yeah, That's great. Now before you came, I was actually uh, cutting lemons and, and using a juicer, just a simple $30 Hamilton Beach juicer to uh, squeeze the lemons. Now if there's this little river of uh, sugar coming down, I'm not worried about it because I'm using a whole two pounds, so an ounce here, an ounce there isn't going to make any difference at all. Now, uh, it calls for 16 to 24 ounces. I've got 24 here, so I'm going to start with 16 and then taste it. When we make ice cream, um, a lot of us believe, not Jeff, that the flavor enhances uh, over a 24-hour period, that the flavor gets stronger. Jeff doesn't buy that, but that's okay. Uh, but Italian ice, what you taste is what you get. So whatever this liquid is, you can take a taste of it and say, yeah, that's perfect. So before you run it, you can adjust the formula. So why but, do you think it works with ices and it's different with ice cream? Because the dairy product blooms, uh, the flavors bloom in the dairy. Everybody, you when you go to their fridge on Tuesday and you have a glass of milk, Wednesday the milk tastes better? We're not adding anything to the milk. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeff, but uh, people like Hagen Dazs and Ben and Jerry and all those disagree with you. So Doesn't I'm just going to let that right. mix for a second. Are you familiar with these? This is the way we eat ice in, in New York. It's called a it's, we call it a squeeze cup. And uh, that's a three ounce, three and a half ounce cup. And so when we put a portion in there, uh, it's crowning over and we're actually eating it from the bottom and squeezing it up and then throwing it on the ground. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you go to, well, I'm from New York. Uh, if you, if you, uh, I was on the Cross Bronx yesterday, or two days ago, and there is this huge dent in the uh, Jersey Barricade. That dent was there 25 years ago. It's all bent in. They still haven't fixed it. Um, if you go to buy this uh, and you ask for a squeeze cup anywhere, out, uh, anywhere north of 125th Street in Manhattan, they're not going to know what you're talking about. This technically is called a pleated water cup. Pleated. Pleated, like a lady's dress. And like you find at a water cooler where you go over and you pull down and get some water. Uh, the only people I know that makes these is Solo, S-O-L-O. -O. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to take a little taste. You're not really writing that down, are you, Solo? No. I hope you are. We did. Because you're going to call me later and ask. The zesting is complete. Okay, I'm going to let you give it a try, Jeff, because I can add some more sugar or water. I think more, a little more lemon. Give me one sec. There you go. Is it mixed up in there? Yeah. Perfect. Nothing more? A little more I would, lemon? A little more lemon wouldn't hurt. You I got more lemon. You can't over-lemon it. Oh, Okay, yes you can, but... All right, so let's put a little half of that again in. It probably now that's needs, all fresh squeezed. You probably can, need some zest. It's coming up. You can buy, um, you can make different, let me just start this up. I'm gonna hit uh, Italian ice and start. That gets me to the speed I want on the infinite overrun, turn on the refrigeration, and we're off. Uh, this product is gonna come out pure white. There's no chemicals in it, there's no additives, even the lemons happen to be organic, uh, just because I couldn't get anything else. And uh, it's gonna be a beautiful product, but to make it even more enhanced, and it really doesn't do anything for the flavor, I'd like to have some little specks of lemon in there. So a pure white field with a little bit of lemon in there, it's gonna look really neat. Uh, so Jeff added the specks for me, made them. And that's all there is to that. That's how simple that is. Now, there's different ways to make this. This is the most expensive way to make this. This probably cost me two cents an ounce. So this four ounce portion cost me uh, eight cents, and I'm gonna sell it for $2. That's a minimum $2. That's one heck of a profit. Uh, I can cut the cost down to, uh, instead of eight cents, 
I can cut it down to about six cents by using an extract, uh, or, uh, excuse me, a base. Um, I'll show you, a base is a gallon jug of flavor. So that's, that's a gallon jug of base, and I could use this instead of using uh, fresh squeezed lemon juice and cut the cost down uh, by a little bit. Again, you're going from eight cents to six cents on a $2 item, uh, you know, who's gonna notice? But you believe, couldn't believe how cheap people can get. If I wanna make something to sell at uh, Shea Stadium, uh, that's the Mets, uh, instead of the Yankees, because I wouldn't sell cheap stuff at the Yankees, um, I, can cut the, <laughs> I can cut this down to about a penny and a half by just using an extract. You buy extracts when you make a uh, vanilla uh, birthday cake, you can buy a lemon extract, and that will cut the cost even further. Uh, but why bother? I mean, if it, if it costs you uh, a penny to make it as opposed to four cents and you're getting two dollars, it's trivial. The, the penny ice is gonna get me customers. The, uh, the, um, the, 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 uh, eight, uh, the uh, two cents an ounce price is gonna get me people lined up around the block. So go for the good stuff. And then of course, all the great buzzwords. All natural, sodium free, cholesterol free. Uh, there's no chemicals, there's no fake colors. No lactose? Nothing, nothing in there at all. Just pure profit. Where and, are those? Where, hmm? where are those? Where Is that are, all we have? That's all I got. Really? We're not gonna serve it to them in that. Okay. We're gonna use cups. Any questions so far? There's variations of Italian ice. Um, in New York, we call it Italian ice. You go down the Jersey Turnpike to Philadelphia, and you'll hear it called water ice. It's the same thing, except we call it Italian ice, they call it Italian water ice. I don't know why, it's just the way they do. Um, uh, in uh, a real Italian neighborhood, Bay 8th Street in Brooklyn, where everybody speaks Italian, they call it granita or granite. Uh, the Italians will call it sorbetto, the French will call it sorbet. Uh, the only difference between sorbet, sorbetto, and Italian ice is I'm getting $2 for an Italian ice and I'm getting $6 for a sorbet. What they do the Polish are, people call it? They don't have a special name. No. Who's that? You can answer it. We'll wait. <laughs> Tell them we said hi. <laughs> there is no difference, no matter what anybody tells you, because the Italians will hem and haw and they'll go, oh, well, it's, 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 it's made by secret and, uh, this, you know, baloney. It's sugar, water, and lemon juice. Um, but, and, what, and then some people say, well, uh, your ice is good, but I'd like it smoother, or I'd like it more coarse, like a granita. What controls that is not the machine, it's the amount of sugar in the product. Um, if I add another half pound of sugar to this, it's gonna be a Philadelphia water ice, because they like it smoother than New York does. If I take, away, if I take the New York formula here, and remove a half a pound, now it's a granita or a granite. It's a crunchy ice. So the, the texture of the product is strictly determined by the sugar and, and, and not anything else in it. So it's really very simple. And don't think that because you're in Philadelphia, you have to make the same product that Rita's puts out or Little Jimmy's puts out. Make what you think is good in Italian ice. If you want that smoother, creamier Italian ice, People say, wow, theirs is different. I like theirs better. So, We want to be better than anybody else. Little Jimmy's, that's mine. Rita's is mine. Um, you can buy those ices. And just to give you an idea of cost, if you buy Little Jimmy's down here in Florida, by the time you pay for the $1,000 order, and you have to go out and buy a bunch of these white freezers to put it in, maybe six or seven of them to hold $1,000 worth of product, you have to ship it down from New York, New Jersey, where Little Jimmy's is, um, and they're using just an extract. They're also maybe using corn syrup, I don't know. Not to mention uh, stabilizers. And a lot of stabilizers to hold it together. So it's a, there's nothing wrong with it, but by comparison to what I'm making, it's a cheap ice. But it actually costs about $70 a, a tub when you do all the math on it. Because, and what kills them is they're not gouging you $70, they're not at all, they're very good, fair people. Uh, but you're paying a lot of shipping costs. And what happens when you ship the ice is let's say you've got in a uh, two and a half or three gallon tub like this. And um, you, you made the ice, you freeze it down to where you couldn't scoop it with a hammer and chisel, it's so hard. That's the way to 
maintain it and to uh, you know store it. Uh, you put it on the truck. The truck, the tr it's a refrigerated truck, a reefer, and he's also got uh, green beans in there, frozen green beans, and DiGiorno pizzas frozen. Well, he's driving down the Jersey Turnpike, and that refrigeration unit is really burning up the diesel. So he says, what the heck, I'll turn it off for two or three hours. What's going to matter? Really, you would think it wouldn't matter. If the green beans melt a little bit, they'll rethaw. Who's going to know? If the DiGiorno pizza melts a little bit and refreezes, no one will care. But the ices, the flavor start, and the sugar starts bleeding to the bottom of the can. So when you talk to people who sell a commercial ice, a Via Veneto or a, 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 or a Rosati uh, or a Little Jimmy, they always talk about how there's this thick goo down at the bottom. And that's your flavor bleeding out of the can. So you're paying good money for that. So it's so much easier uh, just to make your own with this machine because now you control the inventory. I only need... Uh, two tubs of avocado Italian ice because nobody likes it, uh, or I need seven tubs of lemon because we're having the Feast of San Gennaro, um, all sorts of different reasons. How do we like Let's see. You're good. We're getting good. <clears throat> um, if I set a timer on this, this machine would be about 14 minutes to make this product. Uh, I'm going to eyeball it and what you should not be doing when making any of your products is you shouldn't be standing here and ta talking in front of a crowd because you'll get so wrapped up in uh, hearing your own voice that you'll forget to check on your product. Normally what I do <coughs> is I, I, don't put it, I don't put gadgets on my machine because they have to meet National Sanitation Foundation and Underwriters Laboratories, so that $6 timer would cost about $250. If that $6 timer goes down, it's going to take down the whole you know, $10,000 machine and you have to wait for a repairman. If I just buy a $6 timer and it's going to be 14 minutes, I set it for, say, 11 minutes. And then when the bell goes off, I'm over here getting the flavors ready. Oh, the bell went off. It's time for me to go check and see how it's doing. I watch my wife Paula bake a cake and she sets the oven for 23 minutes. Uh, and then when the bell goes off, she doesn't just go over and pull the cake out. She takes a fork and sticks it in to see if it's ready. And then she says, oh, it needs another two minutes or it's ready. Um, but every product has a different freezing time based on the sugar content. The higher the sugar content, the longer the freezing time. How are we doing for, we got spoons. Oh, you got it all set up. Great. We're coming along good. Um, so I wanted to get into also, there's different types of ices. Uh, you can make a cream ice, uh, which is sugar water flavor, but we also add a little bit of dairy to it. That's a cream ice. Uh, you can make uh, something we're going to make later called dairy-free ice cream, which is actually a t uh, an Italian ice but made with coconut, uh, coconut milk instead of uh, tap water. Uh, you can do frozen lemonade like we do at Universal Studios, Disney, uh, Six Flags. Uh, sea World. It's a 16 ounce cup of this exact formula but pulled out softer and uh, we put it in a big cup uh, with a spoon and hand it to people. What do you think? Oh, you got it good. Okay. Um, so there's different names, different products that you can do with it. Uh, I had uh, six Greek brothers uh, open up in uh, Birmingham, Alabama and they sold Greek ices. And they were from New York. I said, why'd you call it Greek Ices? He said, because we're not Italian. Well, that's as good a reason as any. Uh, in uh, Hawaii, it's called Hawaiian Ice. Uh, you can literally call it anything that you want. Uh, but the more machines we put out there, we've got 30, over 37,000 running in the world. The more we get out there, the more it's known as Italian Ice. When I first came down to Florida in 1969 as a student, uh, I was trying to put Italian ice into pizza parlors, and, and they'd look at me and they'd say, well, what's an Italian, you know, <laughs> let alone what's Italian ice? So it was an uphill battle, but that, that's all changed quite a lot. But you can see that's going to be a nice pure white uh, product. You like it? Okay. You can pull this out at any thickness that you want. If you've just run out, run it a little longer in the freezer so you can take it out and scoop it. I like to do it so that I'm going to pull it out, put it in the freezer, and go on to the next batch right away. 
So I'm going to turn off. I have to get where you are, Jeff. I'm going to turn off the refrigeration and open her up. What's the matter? Oh, okay. Let's put that one down. I'll take that and I'll put this into it. That works. Ready? Oh, go ahead. Just ready? Just put it down. Why'd you do that? Problem solved. Oh, it was cracked. leaking. Okay. It was leaking here. Don't worry about the floor. Someone is back. I'm not worried it. about the floor. And that's it. That's our lemon ice. Just that simple. So come on up and try it. Tell me what you think. Or don't tell me what you think. I think it's great. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna do this for you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we can't have ten we can't have a hundred hands in. Mike said something oh, disparaging go. about you. I no, defended I you. you know I wouldn't. There you go. That's what they all say. She's just taking it back to her seat and hiding it. Now, from here, I can go on to a darker flavor. I could go to, uh, say, or, um, orange ice, because there's so little left in the machine, and they're so similar that the orange will cover over the lemon. And then I could go to uh, raspberry, and then I could go to blueberry. So I don't have to rinse out the machine between every batch. Thank you. There you go, right there. That's gonna do it. We're done. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so what do you think? Very refreshing. Just like I remember it. <laughs> okay. Mm. Now, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in the freezer, take it down to zero, and it's going to be rock solid, and I could leave it in there for a month with no trouble whatsoever. Nothing's going to bleed out. Tomorrow, I'm going to look at the weather and say it's going to be a beautiful sunny day. I'm going to need four of those. I'm going to take them out of there, and I'm going to move them to, where'd my cabinet go? My cabinet disappeared uh, to a small serving cabinet uh, set at 16 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, warmer than ice cream. Uh, my contention is if you go to an ice cream parlor and you see Italian ice and ice cream in the same cabinet at six degrees, run away because that means there's a lot of chemicals in the Italian ice to be able to scoop it down at six. It's worth the money to have a separate cabinet just at six degrees. It's also a seasonal product. Um, it's, uh, in the north, it's uh, May to Columbus Day. Down here in Florida, we can sell it year-round because the tourists come down and they'll buy anything. You know, it's, it's, it's a dead of winter and they're swimming in the ocean and drinking margaritas at 11 a.m. And uh, because you're on vacation, you want to do summer stuff. So you eat summer foods. Nobody, no, no Floridian drinks a margarita in the wintertime. Um, so the, the holding temperature is zero or colder. The serving temperature is plus 16 degrees, and that's all there is to it. It's, it's just that simple to make a spectacular product. Now, um, a month from now, or a couple months when you open, and someone comes up to you and says, oh, this is fantastic, you're not going to say uh, that you got the recipe some, from some Presbyterian from the Bronx, New York. You're going to say, oh, no, 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 my great-great-grandfather from Genoa, Italy brought this secret of recipe over, and uh, we can't tell you what it is. You'll never be able to copy it. Well, just go to emerythompson.com and watch the video. <laughs> With that note, I'll leave it to you.
Okay, well, that's pretty good. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, yesterday, uh, as, as you all know, because I constantly hawk it, I run a class two days prior to all of these classes. And in the class, I always ask them, what can I make tomorrow? Because I have to come up with three things to make here. And uh, they looked at me dumbfounded. No offense. Uh, but I went in the back on our food shelves, and I saw that I had a case of number 10 cans of crushed pineapple. So that's what you're getting today. You're getting pineapple. And we'll start with uh, uh, none of this I've made before. Uh, so we'll, we're all uh, rowing blindly upstream here. We'll start with sherbet, pineapple sherbet. Okay, the the recipe for all sherbets is usually three two one, three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, one quart of ice cream mix. That's universally a, a, a given for sherbet. So in thinking about that, I have my two pounds of sugar, but in thinking about the the water, it's three quarts of water. And I noticed that this comes in all natural juice, the crushed pineapple. So what I thought was, why not use the juice as part of the water? Just pick up some more of the flavor. So, uh, this isn't going to work. Talia, come here, hold that. Okay. Uh, we're going to separate the uh, wheat from the chaff here. You got this. Of course we do. There we go. Good job. Thank you. So we're still going to go with three, two, one. Three quarts of liquid, two pounds of sugar, and one quart of ice cream mix, which is the dairy part. Now, let's see if we can hurry up this process. You notice he deserts the ship when it's time to do the work, right? We're left here all alone to do everything. Any questions about anything? <laughs> Come on, have us. Oh, perfect. See, I told you, he was working. <laughs> Just a little humor at your expense, of yes, course. Yes, I expected as much. You know, I have cameras everywhere. I know that. <laughs> and microphones. And microphones. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we have pretty much our pineapple, and we've separated what they call the all-natural juice, which we know is a lie, but it'll do. Now what we have to do is measure how much liquid we have, add to it to get our, how many quarts? Three. three. <laughs> Come on now, not two, three. Okay. All right, let's do that. So we have... Well, we have one, so we'll add two more. That's about three quarts, well, maybe a little more. I always like things a little sweeter and a little more flavorful than most people, I guess, in the business. Uh, so we'll, because we've never made this, we'll, we'll test as we go along. Did you just put this right at my feet? I did, so you can trip over it and find it. <laughs> uh, we'll mix the sugar in with the water even though I don't really do that in my store. I just throw it in the machine, as you know. But because Steve's the boss here and he says to do it, we'll do it. <coughs> 
three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, and one quart of mix. Three, two, one. And three, two, one, like Steve said before, will work for anything. How many different flavors could we make out of this? A gazillion. Right? A gazillion. Yeah, you can make a gazillion. Okay, so there goes our water and sugar. And uh, what else? Oh, I thought, uh, yeah, we have crushed pineapple left, but I also thought uh, as we taste it, I bought some um, uh, pineapple juice concentrate, like FCOJ, what is it called? Uh, frozen concentrate, FCOJ, frozen concentrated orange juice. This is frozen concentrated pineapple juice. They're awfully quiet out there, you know. They're enthralled by every word, Jeff. I don't think so. So we'll add a little of this. Eek. A um, little more maybe than we should have, but okay. And now it's time we'll add some chunks, or what do they call this? They call this chunks? Crushed. Okay, we'll add some crushed. We'll fire it up. And then we'll have to taste it because this is a new thing, so we might have to add a little more of this or that. Like how much of this, I don't know. But you can't add too much of this, right? It'll just... Right, Mike? Flying by the seat of our pants, huh? So say when. <laughs> Jeff is of the uh, too much is never enough school. Correct. Too much is never enough. Uh, 35. 35. Uh, right. Everybody but you was in my class. Where were you? I keep the classes small because I really want them to leave knowing everything there is to know. So usually we're around eight. That's, that's it. What? Oh, way too much to How much, the, the question, because they can't hear it on the mics, how much does Jeff's class cost? 9.95. So for 10 bucks, you're in. <laughs> It's in the uh, other freezer. But I'll tell you, was it worth it? Yeah. Uh, so we'll taste it now that it's all mixed up. I did notice there's a little sugar left in here that didn't dissolve, and I want to add that. So we'll just take a little. And we'll smush it around and then add it back in. Waste not, want not. Okay, taste it, taste it. What'd we forget? The mix? Ice cream mix. I so was waiting. What did we say? A quart? One quart. I'm not the only one who forgets things in formulas. One qu Oh, I didn't forget. I'm testing them. Yeah. <laughs> one quart. These, by the way, are bladders. This is how the ice cream mix comes from the dairy. Usually two of these in one box. And that's one case. There's 10 quarts in each one of these. Uh, if I drop this now, yeah. class is over, and it's, <laughs> it's four hours cleaning this stuff up. This is tough. 
and you'll, you'll drop it, but only once. <laughs> I did only once in my eight years. So we're going to go for a quart. If we add a little more than a quart, it won't water anything down. It'll just make it creamier. Uh, but since this is sherbet, I think we're okay. Now we'll test it. Don't do this. Can't have too much flavor, can you? Never, it? never, never too much. Kahlua, property of Paula Thompson, do not touch. <laughs> well, I got plans for that. We got one more, and what are we gonna make? That? Okay, we got one. Let's add a little more pineapple. Good. Good, right? Yes, we love more flavor. Pineapple, good. <laughs> As long as they're laughing, we're okay. <laughs> Might as well add it all, right? Now, one little thing you want to do while Jeff is doing this in the future, when you're making ice cream or ices or anything else like that, he keeps adding more and more and more stuff. When he finally finishes it, and you taste it, and you say it's fantastic, the best it's ever been, does he know what he put in there? So write down, and, and you'll all make that mistake, write down what it is you put in so that you can do. I know exactly this. what's in there. I know, your mind is like a steel trap, you just can't Absolutely. get it to close. If you're writing this down, if you're writing it down, we have one number 10 can of crushed pineapple, three quarts of liquid, one quart of mix, and the pineapple. That's all. Oh, two pounds of sugar, right. And that's it. Kind of easy. But he's right. We do write down as we go along. We, we made something brand new. new. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, freeze it? Yeah. a shout out to uh, Rod Oranger. Yes. Uh, who owns iRice and Company. Well, he doesn't own it, but he is the big honcho there. The big honcho at iRice. Uh, he sent me a product that we tried yesterday, and it was terrific. It's a Bavarian custard base, and we made a, a vanilla, vanilla velvet ice cream that is just ridiculous from using that. A uh, few other things, which, uh, I can, well, five bucks a piece, I'll tell you. Uh, but, and now we'll put on the refrigeration. You can hear it. You hear the compressor? <laughs> Big deal. All right. I, I just happen to have it here. Just so you know, Jeff and I aren't here to, uh, you know, promote products or anything else like that. What we're here to do is promote great ice cream. We want you to be incredibly successful. And the business. So when we find, and the business. So when we find something great, we tell you about it. And that's the product. Can you zoom in on that, Jack? It's pretty much egg yolks. It's, it's the first ingredient in here is egg yolks. And, that, and they're pasteurized egg yolks so that you can freely add it to your ice cream, making pretty much a custard out of your ice cream. Custard's fantastic. If, if any of you have had custard along the boardwalk or, or anywhere else, and this is terrific. And uh, Steve actually made something good with it. Um, <laughs> last month yeah I'd and so them. i called rod and i said hey freebies you know and he sent them to me and we used it and boy it was easy and good 
the reason he said it like that is he thinks I'm incapable of making a good product. And uh, so the actually good was the buzzwords there. Um, I went up to New York to see uh, an eye doctor and uh, I didn't want to wait. This is a little trick for you folks. If you've got a specialist to go see or any appointment that you have, bring ice cream. Uh, it'll get you right in. But bring the ice cream in the pro uh, When you go up to the receptionist and you're checking in and they say, go sit with the other 300 people, we'll get to you in two days. You go, <laughs> I've got ice cream. Oh, and look, it's melting. You know, and you'll hold on. Oh, no, I'll give it to the doctor. Don't worry. And uh, you hold on to it and you hand it right over to the doctor. What I did to grease the skids is I sent it up in advance uh, uh, using dry ice so that I wouldn't have to uh, carry it all over New York City with me. But uh, it's, it's a great way to get the head of any appointment that you want except motor vehicles. They could care less. They'll find a way just to confiscate it. But anything else, uh, there's nothing like bringing ice cream. <laughs> so what else? What else? Uh, yes. What's that? Oh, okay. Um, not much difference there. Again, who you're talking to. See, the Italians, they all wear white coats and, and a, a, a toque, a, a hat, and a, a, it's like that picture over there. The vest is folded down like that. And they're all carrying around a spectrograph to analyze God knows what. And they're very high, hoi polloi about it. You know, we are very low polloi, if there is such a thing. Uh, ice cream, by the federal government standards, is anything that is 10% fat or milk fat or higher and we call it we don't call it milk fat we call it butter fat so anything that's 10 percent higher is ice cream uh, anything below that there is no standard for the old term when i was growing up you know back in the stone age was ice milk you'll never hear the term ice milk it just sounds awful so they have terms like gelato and yogurt and, and things like that uh, ice cream is milk cream sugar skim milk. Gelato is milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. The difference is uh, we're making, um, what are we making? We're making uh, maple walnut, Oreo cookie, cookie monster, Superman. These are American flavors. The Italians are making tiramisu, fruited abasco, cuyo du arruga, and biscotti. Well, I know what biscotti is. Um, which is all fine and good, but I, you know, even the experts like Malcolm Stogo, who specializes in the United States in gelato, says gelato is pretty much dead. And I know some of you out there don't want to hear this, but you know, we're here to get you into business, not to have you fail. And there's a couple of things wrong with gelato. The main one is a mother walks in and your biggest age group now, which we're going to talk about later, is the millennials. There are 85 million millennials between 21 and 39 years old. They're starting to have children. So the millennial mother walks in, she has her five-year-old daughter in tow, and her mother is pulling on her skirt saying, can I please have a, 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 a hazelnut gelato? Uh, or can I have a tiramisu? No, that's not happening. They're saying, can I have uh, moose tracks? Can I have Superman? Can I have Oreo cookie? This is what Americans buy. I don't care how much you want to talk about how great gelato is, it is great. It's European, it doesn't sell here. Now, would I have it in an ice cream parlor if I had an ice cream parlor? Probably yes. I'd probably have about four or five flavors of gelato because there's enough people who like it and they're gonna say, oh, that's wonderful, along with my ice cream and my Italian ice. Uh, that's the way I set things up. Uh, my theory is, if you go to Brooks Brothers and they sell blue suits, that's great. But if they only sell blue suits, they don't sell brown suits or seersuckers or cardigans, um, you know, I'm sorry, go away. We don't sell brown suits. We only sell blue suits. How can you run a business that's that, that narrow cast? So the idea of gelato, uh, three of us walk in. Uh, I, want, uh, I want pistachio. Uh, Jeff wants uh, chocolate chip cookie. And the third person wants raspberry, uh, cherry Italian ice. The server is very quietly saying to us, to the other two people, go away. We don't have anything for you. We only sell gelato. So from not is it a great product or what's in it or it's healthier or this and that, 
strictly from a business standpoint. We're here to make money. My business card on the back says my goal is to make money and have fun doing it. And I do both. Uh, but our goal is to make money, not to promote to the public what we think they should be eating. Uh, we've got to sell them what the public wants. And if every third person walks in and says, oh, you don't have hazelnut and walks out, you can be darn sure tomorrow I'll have hazelnut gelato on the menu. But it is still milk, cream, sugar, skim milk. The only difference is theirs is below 10% fat and we're at 10% and above. They're using exotic Italian flavorings and we're using just standard stuff uh, from the supermarket. So I didn't plan to go down that road, but it's a, it's a very significant thing because I don't want to see people go out of business. And if you open up a, a, clo a men's clothing shop and only sell blue suits, I can guarantee you'll be out of business. It's not enough uh, of a broad spectrum. Jeff's business is different if you've been up there. He has, uh, he's unique to the whole world um, in what he sells and you'd have to go see it. How many uh, times have you been there? None. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get there. Just checking. It's, it's on my bucket list. <laughs> it's on and I got a big list. bucket. <laughs> um, what I often recommend to people, because, you know, 15 years ago, uh, you could go into a bank and you could say, hey, I need $100,000 to open up an ice cream parlor. They'd say, great, fine, here, sign here. Would you like a house with that? You know, we'll give you a nice mortgage. Nowadays, with this thing called Dodd-Frank, which has been in existence for about eight years, uh, there was a banker on um, uh, Fox Business the other day, and he was, at, he was actually an honest, baker, uh, honest banker. He said, you know, if you come in and ask for $30,000 for a home loan, we're not going to give it to you. Not because your credit score isn't 810, not because we don't like you, not because the property is valuable. The paperwork with the federal government is so onerous that a $30,000 loan doesn't pay for us. So what I've done uh, with that in mind is I'm dealing with a lot of people who don't have a, a huge figure to open up an ice cream parlor. That's why I developed the CB350, so that you could get into the business uh, and work the machine to death. Uh, we literally have people running them 24 hours a day. And, if you, if, or, and you can run at 18, you can run at 15. If you're running anything 15 hours a day, you're making a lot of money. And so at some point in time, you've got enough cash in the bank that you just say, oh, I haven't seen my wife in three weeks. I haven't gotten out of here on a day off because I'm so successful. I'm going to graduate up to a bigger machine uh, and cut my freezing time, not the freezing time, but the batch size. I'm gonna make it four times bigger. By the way, how'd your business start? What do you mean? How did you start getting into business? Did you start with a 24 quart? Six quart. Yeah? Year and a half. And then what happened? You made so much money? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that you wanted some time off, so you graduated no, up to that. No, I, I have less time off now than I ever did. Because you're so successful. Well. But at first you bought this because that's what you could afford. Right. And that's the whole idea. But um, that's fine. It is That's fine. fine. Je Jeff's concepts of how to get into business are extremely sound. And if you had to boil it down to one statement, it would be spend as little money as possible and work your equipment to death and yourself. You know, you're a new entrepreneur. It's your business. You're not reporting to a boss. If you got to get in there and unlock the building and mop the floors, be happy you're doing it because it's your business. It matters. And then as you make more money, well, then you can... Uh, stay home and start talking to suppliers or doing whatever you need to do for a couple hours and let someone else open up the building. You know, it'll all come gradually. But the old days of, you know, we're just going to put up a $250,000 ice cream parlor and, and hope that people come, you know, those days are gone. I was speaking to a lady this morning, she bought a continuous freezer. You weren't really talking to her this morning, right? that's like a story. Huh? Uh, oh, good. I'll quit. All right. <laughs> because your product's ready. <laughs> he sneaked it out of us. Snuck it. Snuck it. Okay, this is, uh, you can come up and have some if you want. I want to try it. By the way, all, all our homemade ice creams, ices, sherbets, sorbets, they're all pretty bland because we don't add extra coloring to it. This is pineapple, and of course we could add a nice yellow to it and make it appealing visually, but why? 
So they're, they're bland in looks, not yeah, taste. Yeah, they're bland in looks. They're outrageous in taste. Okay, let's have some, if you want. Uh, what's that? No. No. There's no using the same bowl. Throw your old bowl away. And then... Yeah, but he pays for the bowls. I don't. <laughs> yes. And is that what you typically use, or you just keep costs down? Or That's or what I use in Florida. Yeah, I'll, you don't I'll, use a 14 or 16, or just stick with the 10 percent. I use 14 or 16 anywhere else. I'll mention that next because that's important. Mm. Jeff, that's great. Well, what are you calling this? I don't know. Pineapple sherbet. <laughs> okay. So I'll tell Crystal. <laughs> well, thank you. Good. Well, Jeff is working on a, a, a very sound premise, and, and that is nobody ever walked out of an ice cream parlor and said, oh, gee, that's the best butterfat I ever ate, or oh, man, I'm in love with his air content. People eat flavor, and Jeff uses a lot of flavor, so you don't eat a pale pink ice cream. If he hands you a pale pink ice cream, you don't say, that's delicious, what is it? and you can't tell if it's raspberry or strawberry, you know it's raspberry. Mm -hmm. People, no matter what, people eat flavor. That's what it's all about. It's, it's, uh, it comes down to being that simple. Use a lot of good flavor, you'll have a great ice cream. If people, I, I, you're saying, I had to repeat the question so people can hear it. You're saying people go by color. Maybe you're in my age group, us, we go by, might go by color, but the, the younger people don't go by color. They know it's red dye 40. They know it's yellow 17. They know it's green 6. And they don't want anything to do with it. Now, there's a way around that. There is a great company called Green Mountain Flavor. Um, let me get something from them. They're in Oswego, Illinois. And this is up on my website, so you can uh, look it up easily. Um, but Stan Sitton makes uh, natural flavors and colors. Uh, this story is getting old, but it's a, it's, it's a truism. Uh, we were in the Bronx, and Stan, when I first met him, he sends me a bottle of concentrated beet juice. And the only person on earth I know who likes beets is, is Paula, my wife. Uh, otherwise, nobody likes beet juice. And, and I call up Stan. You like beet juice. It, I figured. I knew it. Um, the, so I call up Stan, and I say, Stan, you, you got to be kidding me. You know I'm located in the South Bronx. You want me to sell beet Italian ice? And he goes, oh, no, no, Steve. We've taken all the taste out of it. We've concentrated it down to a color so that when you make a cherry ice, you can make it bright and red so people stand out because kids still like bright colors. And so what happens is the mother comes in, she's got the stroller, and she sees the big bright cherry ice, and she says, oh, no, I don't want that. That's red dye 40. Oh, no, ma'am, it's beet juice. Well, you just made such an impression on her because you're using a natural product, beets, and using it because they're the reddest thing uh, in nature. So you're using it oh, as, as your coloring. So Stan does stuff yeah. like that. Question, yeah. I think that it's good that it, that it doesn't have uh, more of a yellow color because it's more of a surprise to you when you taste it. Yeah, on the product Jeff just made, yes. Yeah, um, the yellow hue that it has, it's almost like a, it's almost like a cream. Uh, is all coming just from the pineapple. So it just screams fresh. And I think that's important. Yes? Okay. Um, if I wanted to make a vegan water ice, I just used um, lemons. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking, I was thinking something else. Uh, vegan we're going to get into as my third flavor in the afternoon because that's going to be a coconut based and it's a whole different story. It's absolutely spectacular. Okay. You're not going to believe it, so stay tuned. Um, this is one of Jeff's uh, flavors. Uh, any chef that you talk to will tell you that if you're using watermelon or cantaloupe or honeydew, uh, you take a honeydew and you squeeze it and you've got just water. There really isn't a lot of flavor there. It drives executive chefs nuts. Uh, so he has come up with a all-natural cantaloupe flavor 
so that I can use fresh cantaloupe in my machine. I'm the only machine where I can slice it into big pieces and just drop it right in. Uh, cantaloupes, bananas, nuts, candies, the whole works. Can't do it on any other machine. But then I bolster the flavor uh, with a little bit of cantaloupe extract to give it a little more power because the fruit itself doesn't have the power. So that's a good one to know. It's up on my website, emerythompson.com. It's called Green Mountain Flavors. How many flavors do they have? I have no idea. A lot. Uh, do we want to take a coffee break? Do we? Or, or keep going. Do what they. time is it? It's 10. 10? Yeah, or keep going. We can go with one more. All right. Yes? The, oh, well, get both of you. Um, cream ice. Is the temperature, the serving temperature the same? And does the, does the consistency last if you take the cream ice to a festival? Is oh. it pretty hot? No. Okay. The, the question is, what about the temperature, serving temperature of cream ice, and what happens if you take flavors to a festival? It's a great question. Uh, Jack, can you scan the camera over here? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's present, pretend this is my serving cabinet, my push cart or my dipping cabinet, whatever we want to use. Hold on. Hold on. We have an emergency. There you go. <laughs> um, Three-second rule, you could have picked it up. Um, this is my dipping cabinet, and it's wrapped in cheap aluminum tubing going all the way around, and it's connected to a refrigeration unit, and that's what keeps it cold. So this whole cabinet, let's say for ices, is set at 16 degrees, but not all the cabinet is equal. The temperature right here in the center is 16 degrees, where, uh, where if the camera can see, this is 16 degrees right here. Over in the corner here, there's refrigeration going this way and that way. So that corner in this 16 degree cabinet is probably about 13 degrees. It's colder. So we've got four corners of the cabinet that are colder. If you ever go into an ice cream parlor and you see the server scooping one product nicely and the other one they're struggling with, uh, the owner doesn't know what I'm about to tell you. And that is with colder temperatures at the corners, uh, you put your high sugar content flavors in there. So vanilla is going to be in the center here, low sugar, and uh, cookie bomb with three different cookies and Hershey syrup and chocolate chips is going to go in the corner. That way they're both going to scoop evenly. So if you're doing cream ices, which are a little bit softer running, you put them in the four corners and you put your, your regular lemon ice here and your cherry there. If you're doing nothing but cream ices, and I think you should have a mix of them, if you're doing nothing but cream ices, just turn the thermostat down lower. So whatever flavor you have that's laden with extra sugar, put them in the four corners. Your, your, your ice cream will scoop easier. Your serving uh, temperature for the uh, cream ice will work better. What about non-refrigerant, um, like push cart? Because my push cart, it's just, it's, it's just um, you put your Italian ice in, and it just insulates itself. Uh, well, you must be putting dry ice in there, too. We put uh, eight containers of Italian ice in there. Do you chill it down first? Well, it's frozen when I put it in there. Yeah, but do you plug the cabinet in? No, it does. It's it's not. There's no electricity to it. Okay. It's old, I guess. I would think you'd want to bring some dry ice because yeah, your product isn't going to last long. We have ice plates. The Nelson ice plates. Oh, we see, down you didn't say that. So the ex so the ice well the ice plates are bringing more refrigeration. Don't so put your with them. put your water warmer flavors. Uh, next to the ice plates. That's simple. Wherever there's cold, put the softer products towards it. There was a question back there. Yeah. You were saying you got to put your, all your goodies right in the machine, um, like candies and hard things. That's not going to damage your drum after time? Not Emory Thompson, no. Yeah. Because my drums, as you... You could put rocks in there. Another drum, like that drum. Other manufacturers, when they make a freezing cylinder, take a flat sheet of thin stainless steel and they have a big machine that comes down and it stamps it into a spaghetti pot. In order for it to be stamped, it's got to be very thin. That's why they can't put anything in their machines because it will dent it, it'll damage it, and their dashers aren't strong enough. When Emory Thompson makes a cylinder, which you'll see out in my factory, we take plate stainless steel, you can barely lift it, and it's a flat sheet, and we put it in a machine and we roll it continuously until it's round, and then we heliarc weld it, and then we weld on the bottom plate, and that cylinder is thicker than any uh, cylinder on the market. We've never replaced a cylinder. 113 years, 
and a cylinder has never worn through. That's one of the big advantages of Emory Thompson is they don't wear out. You can't, I mean, if you do it with a Capigiani, you're going to, uh, you're going to uh, void your warranty. Uh, in fact, I, I knew I had arrived in the world, you know, not because of a car I drive or because of a bank account or a vacation, but one father called up one time and he said, on Saturdays, I take care of the kids. We have a uh, five-year-old and a three-year-old. And just like we used to put our kids in front of Sesame Street and, and leave them there for hours, he said he was putting his kids in front of Emory Thompson uh, videos. <laughs> and he walks past the room one day, and the five-year-old is saying to the three-year-old, it was a video about cylinders and, and putting stuff in, and the five-year-old saying to the three-year-old, now don't try this with a Taylor machine. <laughs> and I thought, I've made it. You know, I've even got, I'm, I'm now entertaining kids. So, no, that's, that's the cold, hard truth is uh, their machines last on average eight years. That's why there's 150 Capigianis for sale at eBay. There are no Emory Thompsons. And if an Emory Thompson shows up and you call me the next day and want to ask about it, I'll tell you the truth. You're too late. It's sold within two hours. It's the most sought-after machine in the world. We know we build a great machine. And guess what? We cost about $10,000 less than they do on the bigger machines because you're buying direct uh, you're not going through a dealer, but this is not to be an infomercial. I'm going to make something for you. I'm going to make, uh, let's see, I'll save the avocado. I'm going to make a blueberry Italian ice. So we'll pass this around. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to make something I'm probably not going to give you a taste of, sorry, because it's for my wife Paula. Yes. <laughs> Depending on your personal taste. <laughs> Honey works. Agave works. Agave. Maple syrup. We've got maple syrup up there. That works. If you're nuts, you can add Splenda. <laughs> it, it should, nuts don't have sugar. I got to tell you, this is the simplest, most logical product in the world. You've made soup before, haven't you? Yeah. And you throw a, a chicken or the carcass of a chicken in a pot, and you start it simmering. You add some carrots and onions, of course, maybe some celery, right? Now it's working on chicken soup. But what happens if you added a bunch of rice? That would be okay, wouldn't it? Yeah. What if you added a little cream? That would be okay. How about if you added some asparagus? That's okay. You can't fail. All you can do is make it different. It's just like soup. With this machine, you can throw anything in there. I feel like now it's an infomercial. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really, I mean, you know those, those mints you get for free at the restaurant at the, at the end? Of, they're rock hard. They're like that. Throw a bag of those in if you want something different. You can't hurt anything. There's some out at the front entrance that I use and throw in ice cream to make a key yes, lime sir. mint. There's still different things that you want to layer in afterwards that you don't want to put in the machine, like ripples or... Ripples? What? Yeah, like a bunch Butterscotch. Swirl. Oh, uh, well, I do that afterward. Um, yeah, it's on the videos, the, the uh, variegate, right? The variegates. We did, last month we did a var We made Cinnabon ice cream with caramel designs running through. You made raspberry chocolate swirl yesterday. We made raspberry ice cream and then a fudge swirl separately. We put the raspberry ice cream out of the machine into a big container, lined up our one gallon containers, put the swirl on top, the, the fudge on top, folded it, and then squeezed it and put it in and it came out beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to make one product for all of you and one for my wife because you have to always want to keep your office manager happy. Jeff, if you can follow me, uh, Jack, if you can follow me over here. I'm going to use the countertop machine, which is a new, uh, brand new machine came out in this summer. Uh, it makes a quart and a half to two quarts. So I've already put uh, a quart and a half of mix in here and I just drop it down into the freezing cylinder and I'm going to add, I'm making coffee Kahlua. So I'm using Taster's Choice freeze-dried crystals. That's redundant. What is? Coffee Kahlua. One's got alcohol in it. 
Okay. <laughs> so I've got the crystals in there. I I'm a coffee snob. I uh, roast my own beans. Uh, I grind them. I turn it into great coffee. I would never drink Taster's Choice because I'm a snob. What's but this over here? That's, that's, um, that's Starbucks. <laughs> okay. Um, but it makes the world's greatest coffee. It's incredible. But it's a little on the bitter side. And so a way that you get rid of the bitterness is a couple of squirts of Hershey syrup, good old-fashioned Hershey syrup. You will never taste the chocolate in the coffee, but it'll take away the bitterness. Or you can use cocoa. You take could use it. cocoa. And we had some leftover Kahlua. This is, like I said, property of Paula Thompson, do not touch. So we're going to pour that in there, too. We're the only machine that you can put alcohol into and still have it freeze. Now, this machine is uh, slower than our other machines. This is about 20 minutes or so. And I'm going to drop that down and just lock it in place. And I turn it on, and I turn on the refrigeration. And that's going to go do its own thing. So now we'll get down to uh, the real product we're going to make, the blueberry. And if you'll talk to them for a second, I'm going to go get everybody. This is uh, Crystal, when you, if you can see her. Uh, when you call up here, the first person you'll speak to is Crystal. And she can get you anywhere you need to get to. She can take any part order that you need. And she works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> For minimum pay. Pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, it, you're only limited by your imagination. Even a guy like Mike, who has no creative juices in him, no imagination, <laughs> even a guy like this can make ice cream that's terrific. And I don't care if you buy the book or not, I sell tons of them, but there's 20 or so recipes in there, and that would take you for the first five years in business, if that's all you did. But you can't help yourself. You know, you'll, you'll see the coconut recipe, and you'll try it, and it's unbelievable. And then you'll say, well, how about if we make raspberry coconut? And you'll start doing that. Or what we graduated to was Mounds Bar ice cream, where we take coconut ice cream and run a swirl of, of dark chocolate through it and call it Mounds Bar. But it's a starting point for everything, and it's all so simple. Come on, ask a question. You paid for this class. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Hey, there's a question in the back. You make a lot of ice creams with liquor, though. Correct. There's none in your book. Correct. Can you get any of those? Recipes? Only in my class. Uh, those are proprietary to the class. And in the class, I gave them about 100 uh, uh, recipes with liquor in them uh, because got to have some reason to take that class. <laughs> uh, and you all got them, right? and you're happy and you're going to use them, okay. Uh, yeah, I just held those back for the class. And uh, you should have seen their faces when I gave them the book of recipes that have liquor in them, or alcohol, as we say. Or I call them adult recipes. And we sell them at the store. We sell about, we always have about 35 flavors or so, and usually about um, 15 to 18 to 20 are adult flavors. And they're up here, and the regular flavors are here. Yes, sir? You're open tonight at the store. What time is it open? Uh, my store is open six nights a week from 6 to 10 p.m. That's it. 24 hours. It's like a part-time deal, isn't it? And I'm rich. <laughs> Amazing. Can I, tell, can I tell them the backstory of your, your store? What an amazing business. Uh, four hours a night, and they line up to get in there. They line up. We have to go to Tampa. We're trying to make it back. Jeff well? used to be a hopelessly liberal school teacher. And uh, he would come in here, and we would not only teach ice cream, but we'd argue politics, like, to going at it. Until one day he walks in, and he hands me a conservative person's hat, and I said, what happened to you? He said, I'm paying taxes now. It's terrible. <laughs> That'll turn a liberal conservative real fast when you are making so much money, you got to pay taxes. But let me tell you the story about Jeff's business, because he won't. It's, it's How many really, times have you been there? How many None. Times? OK. It's really, 
<laughs> it's really funny because he does have a very unique clientele. He's right next to uh, this country is one of the, if not the largest, close to the largest retirement communities uh, in the United States. And when you get up to be about Jeff's age, uh, you're sitting down to dinner, and one spouse says to the other, and we know which one it is, okay, you can only have two glasses of wine, and then you're cut off. And one of the other spouse crumbles, and oh, are you? So two glasses of wine, that's it for dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, then about 7.30, he, the one spouse turns to the other and says, hey, honey, let's go over to Jeff's and get some ice cream because we know what's in the vanilla ice cream. They don't call it bourbon vanilla for nothing, and they don't call it rum raisin for nothing. So they're fooling themselves. They take their little golf carts, and they go off campus, and they go over to Jeff's place, and they're having a nice big portion of rum raisin ice cream, and it's a party. I mean, it's, it's a nightclub that sells ice cream. <laughs> and that's how Jeff has this incredible niche. It's not going to be perfect for everybody, but he, he, he looked at a situation and said, there's a way to make money here uh, by making a fantastic product. and uh, Charging a fair price. Charging a fair price. Treating everybody great. Treat, that's the key. He treats everybody very well except me. That's why I don't go. Uh, but it's, it's, it's just amazing what he's done about, and how the business about is About half of the people that come in do live in that community. Uh, we are not golf cart accessible, and the rum raisin isn't like this that they eat. Come on, didn't you ever hear urban legend? You know, you've got to embellish a little bit. Okay, it's big. Uh, but it's, no. it's good. Yes, ma'am. What took so long? I expected that question a half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago. Talk to me later. Every state is different, but there's a few universal truths, and we'll talk about it. And by the way, you know that you can't freeze alcohol, right? Alcohol doesn't freeze. However, this machine, once again, an infomercial, <laughs> but it's true. If you think of everything as molecules, everything in the, in, the, in the universe is molecules, and picture molecules as little balls. A molecule is a little tiny ball. Well, alcohol is little tiny balls, molecules. And if you put alcohol in the machine, it won't freeze. You can keep the machine running for a week, it won't freeze. But if you add other little tiny balls, which is ice cream mix or other ingredients, those are little tiny balls too. And those little tiny balls surround the molecules that are alcohol balls. And so, although you're not freezing the alcohol, you're suspending the alcohol in a frozen mixture. So that's how that can work. Other yes, machines sir. don't have enough refrigeration What's capability to do it. Serving? Same as everything. Yeah, believe it or not, I know you don't understand it so much because you haven't seen it, but it's ice cream. It's not ices or sherbet or water ice or cream. It's ice cream. And uh, in the, the week before New Year's Eve, uh, I make champagne ice cream. Champagne ice cream. And we have to be open New Year's Eve just for a few hours uh, so that people can come and get it to take with them. Uh, on their way wherever they're going. Yes, sir. Good question. He asked, when do you add the alcohol in this process? When I grew up with these machines, I'm only in business eight years, and everything I know I've, I've thought about and discovered for eight years. And when I first got my machine, the six quart, I knew nothing. I knew nothing because I came and took his class and I sat right where that gentleman is and I left here still knowing nothing. Oh, come but, on. <laughs> how to get back at you. But, but what Watch I... Watch it, that's my shooting arm. <laughs> what, I, what I did learn, and, and he knows this, what I learned sitting back there is that if this guy can make what he made, I can far surpass that. Only because, I, no, only because I'm an ice cream guy. Don't forget, he's a machine guy. I'm an ice cream guy. I love ice cream. And the first thing he made was a Merlot ice cream. And it was awful. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't good. 
But I knew that I could make it good, and we still do it now. We still have Merlot chip ice cream. But I knew I could make it better. And what I did in answer to your question, when do you add certain things? You can just dump everything in there, turn it on, and, and, and get ready to roll. Get your next flavor working. That's what you just saw me do with the little one. I just poured the alcohol in. I'm going to take a quick break while I, from Jeff talking while I put this in. This is the sugar and water that you saw in the recipe. Again, it doesn't get any easier. Sugar and water. And blueberries. Lots of blueberries. Turn on the infinite overrun control, set it for homemade, uh, for Italian ice, turn on the refrigeration, and now I'm adding my blueberries. Now, I cut back on the sugar content because I'm getting more sugar from the blueberries. Blueberries. So, did you do anything to prepare these blueberries? No, just thought them. Because it says on the thing that you marinate them. Yeah. Or I didn't have to do it. I didn't do it. Um, I did say about marinating in there, that would be for blueberry ice cream, but for the Italian ices, I don't find it necessary. Uh, just lots of blueberries. What's with the lipstick on the spoon? Huh? And I'll show you in a second how I used to make this until I met Jeff. Does anybody know when blueberry season is? Yes, July. Yeah, and, and uh, in some places June. But the point is, it's not now. There aren't any fresh blueberries out there unless they're coming up from Argentina and then they taste like cardboard. So, the way I used to make blueberry Italian ice or blueberry ice cream until I met Jeff was we opened up, can you grab one of those tins, those orange ones, but don't show the name? This is called a number 10 tin in the industry. It's called a number 10 tin, it contains three quarts and it's loaded with the cheapest blueberries that nobody can sell in the supermarket, put into a heavy syrup, uh, corn syrup, and a lot of preservatives and stabilizers. Thank you. And that's, you can put it back. And that's the way we used to make blueberry ice cream until Jeff came along and he goes, what are, you, what are you doing? I go to the supermarket. And the blueberries are in the ice cream section along with the strawberries, the mango, everything. And they were picked at the height of the season. And then they were put in these bags and they were frozen. There's no syrups in here, there's just blueberries. Now, you can buy uh, Dole brand, which is famous, you know, Dole pineapple. You can pay more for Dole, but my feeling is those are for, if you're serving uh, a blueberries over ice cream tonight or a blueberry dessert, you want nice looking blueberries. But I'm putting them into this machine that's gonna mash them all up to create my flavor, so I buy the store brand. This is uh, Walmart and they're gonna be fantastic. He disagrees. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> okay. We're working on 65% profit when we make this stuff. That's unheard of. So what if it's 63.5% profit? Get the best. I told you yesterday, don't buy schmorios, get Oreos. Don't buy schmooberries, get blueberries. Get the real deal, get what you grew up tasting. You didn't grow up tasting uh, uh, white cream sandwich cookies from Walmart. You grew up tasting Oreos. So get Oreos. Get Snickers. Don't get Schmickers. It, just get the real deal. It, it's not going to make a difference. Same with sugar. <coughs> we don't agree on sugar. You want to get something that's uh, quality, but economic, right? No. Forget economics. Forget economics. Stick with quality, right? We worked all the prices out yesterday to the penny. And how much are you saving with Schmorios over Oreos? 
pennies. It's nothing. It's nothing. When uh, in a 24 quart machine, you're getting out six gallons of ice cream, six gallons to make. Uh, I'm giving away the whole secret here. <clears throat> to make it, let's say your your bladders cost you twenty five dollars, which they won't. It's less than that. So you've got twenty five dollars of ice cream mix going in. Now you're looking at the schmooberries or blueberries, schmorios, Oreos. The difference is, let's say the difference is $2 to get Walmart, uh, to get a grocery store blueberry or Dole blueberries, or bird's eye blueberries, whoever makes them. So the difference, $2 now, $2 spread out over six gallons, 10 servings per gallon. 60 servings, $2. It doesn't make sense. When you're shopping for ingredients, just buy the best, the absolute best. Today we're going to make a cheesecake ice cream. And last night I went to the store to buy the cheesecake, and they had a Walmart a cheesecake like mix, you know. And it was, I don't know, $1.29. This was $1.99 doesn't make sense. The difference is, is so small. Yet, 80% of you, when you make ice cream, you're going to do that. You're going to go up and down the aisles and you say, oh, Schmorios, I get twice as much for less money. Well, I'll take those. But if you want your ice cream store to stand out <coughs> with all the other stores, the very first person that walks in is going to taste your ice cream and say, wow, that tastes... What did you say about payday. I made payday ice cream out of payday candy bars. And Mike said, what'd you say? It tastes exactly it tastes exactly like a payday. How good is that? I could have bought junky peanuts and little caramel, and but I used payday candy bars. And as a result, uh, he surprised me. He tasted it, his eyes rolled back, and he said it tastes just like a payday. And that's what you want. Now, I could say that Jeff doesn't know his ass from third base, but I won't say that. <laughs> I happen to agree with him that if it's a name brand product, there is no other payday. There is no other Oreo cookie. I think I know fruit better than he does because I spent a lot of time at the Hunts Point Market. And the difference between fruit only, that's all I'm talking about, is between the, the Dole and the uh, store brand. They're coming off the same fields, but they're separated there by looks by how they look in quality. And I uh, if you're think paying 99 cents for a grapefruit, it's because it looks prettier than the uh, five for a dollar bag. And I think that you're gonna get a more consistent, sweeter, consistent, very big, sweeter blueberry, package of blueberries, if you get dull. That's what I think. I don't think I'm wrong, but I know that when I buy a bag of frozen blueberries and it's dull, I can pretty much rest assured that when I make that ice cream in three months, I'm going to have the same thing. But if I get an off-brand, maybe it won't be as consistent and exactly the same thing. And the difference in money is so slight. No, it could be a couple of dollars oh, per bag. Oh, a couple of per, dollars. Per bag. Holy cow. A couple of dollars over 60 servings. But, Jeff, not everybody's getting $7 for a serving. Six dollars. Six dollars. And everybody will get most five or six dollars. Most everybody's getting three. Every no, everybody's yeah. gonna be charging five or six dollars for a serving of ice cream. That's what it is today. I did for six years. One size, five dollars, that's it. No cones, no toppings, no sundaes, no mixing flavors, one size, five dollars, no sales tax, it's in there already. Five dollars, that's it. Uh, it varies. Half of them are from the retirement area, but the retirement area now is high 40s and low 50s up to 70s. It's different. When I moved there eight years ago, retirement age was mid 60s, but now it's down to low 50s. You young people are moving in. <laughs> I'm sure I'm we can find better things to argue about, but okay. the other difference is I'm putting it into sugar water. Right. And that's a whole different ballgame than putting it into dairy. We can agree dairy, to disagree. Dairy, we can. I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. 
<laughs> okay, we're getting near. This is ice cream? This is uh, Italian ice. Oh, oh Italian Just straight ice? Italian okay. ice. Sugar, okay. water, and blueberries. Yes. The 350 machine only comes in 220. What you're looking at, though, is single phase versus three phase. Single phase runs anywhere in North America. You could run this in your living room. Uh, but it, the motors are so heavy that it's, it's definitely going to run on 220. No. All single phase. No. It's air-cooled, single phase. 220. And let's see how we're looking. Oh, that's nice. Wait till you see this. Oh, it's beautiful. And the added benefit, it has the Walmart logo embedded in it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Turn off the refrigeration. You'll notice if you see one or two, because that's all they have, videos from the Italians, they have these bars in the way. The bars are so you don't put your fingers in the machine. We have guards outside the machine. It wasn't very difficult to figure out. If you don't want to impede the flow, put the guards outside, not on. They take their worst nightmare, which is they can't get the uh, product out of the machine fast enough, and turn it into, oh, isn't it nice? It decorates the product. Well, as soon as you put a scoop in it, there goes your decoration. We want to get this product out fast. If you're broiling a steak and it's ready in eight minutes, we want to get it out of that oven real quick or it's going to become uh, uh, well done very quickly. So watch how fast I discharge this. There'll be, no, there'll be total consistency from front to back. Look at all, and that color is all from the blueberries. That's all right. I'm not cleaning it. <laughs> Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Look at that product. And all that color is just from blueberries, sugar, water, and cheap blueberries. <laughs> Wanna start serving that? You turned me off? I thought I turned you on. Now this is blueberry Italian ices, right? Yeah. Boy, this looks good. No, just take it. Move on. Move no along. small ones. Move just along. Just throw it out. So the machine ground up the blueberries sufficient for me to get all the flavor I wanted and plus still leave me pieces so that I can look and say, oh, that's blueberry. Thank you. Boy, you're getting good at this, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> but just right. People do call up, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. They call up and they say, Wow, I was watching your videos and I thought, if, I, if St that idiot Steve Thompson can do that, imagine what I can do. And, and I just think that's great because we want you to be better than us. We want you to put your own creativity in. Thank you, sir. So what do you think? Good? Very good. Good flavor? Yes. Why do you choose to keep the blueberries full and not puree them? It's subjective. Jeff, I know purees everything. But I, uh, the question was, why didn't you puree the blueberries? I think if I had more time, uh, instead of trying to teach this class, I might have pureed three quarters of them and then just put the rest in whole because uh, you do no, get... No, that, that, the other machine. Check the other Oh, one. it's doing great. Nice. Um, Jeff is absolutely right. He showed me when I was making M&M ice cream that I had M&Ms in there. So I had ice cream with M&Ms in it. Crystal! His, he ground up the M&Ms and so the M&M taste was all throughout. It's what I call the fruit flavor. Uh, this product, if you were blindfolded and tasted, you'd say, yeah, it's blueberry. 
Uh, that's the flavor. But uh, then there's the identity. I can open, take off the blindfold and I can look at it and I can say, yep, that's blueberry. I can see blueberries in it. So I want to get both in the product. Uh, but you're not wrong doing it either way. It's, again, it's personal taste. You can see I got a sufficient amount in there so that it uh, gave a tremendous flavor throughout it. Hey, Steve, how's your wife's ice cream coming? Oh, just fine. She's going to love it. <laughs> it uh, because I put alcohol in it. This is a much smaller freezing unit. This is going to... Uh, 20 to 22 minutes, where these are uh, about 9, 10, 11. So I can pull this out at any time. It's ready now. So I'll just ready. turn that I'll off, turn that. off that, lift that up. Jack, can you see this? Yes, sir. All right. Look at how you get the tub out. You just push on the... <laughs> it's frozen. Well, it's not coming out. Uh, what I'll tell you, I know what happened as an engineer. I had water on there because I was rinsing it. I didn't wipe it off. So now the ice is frozen on there. I should have dried it. You want to try this? Try what? That. You mean taste it? Yeah. Oh, sure. Because I don't. What is it? You all want to try it? Yeah. All right. All right. Come on up. You can take one taste. Come on up. Oh, that's good. He says it's good. That's good. Here you go, I got the spoons here. That's good. That's good. Did you use cheap sugar in there? I sure did. <laughs> Cheapest I could find. In fact, they were selling it on the side of the street. Oh, uh, you got to start a new spoon. Yeah. I did? Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, that's what they all say, sure. Yeah, it's right there. Kahlua coffee, just take one. I don't have enough to give out to everyone. How smart so I am. Just take one. How great looking I am. How much better looking in person than I am. Uh, is that a fresh spoon? It is. She handed it to me. Okay. She cut in front of me. The noise. Gee, some people. Right. And you're not going to change. Here you go. Nothing will change. Just you got one. Sure. Just add some sugar. Here you go. Now, I did a variation of this. I did my coffee ice cream at Christmas time, and uh, Paula's father was, for many years, New York Police Department. And we all know the joke about all police departments. So I made an ice cream dedicated to the NYPD, and I called it NYPD. It was coffee, ice cream, and donuts. <laughs> Glazed donuts. It was good. Uh, I put some uh, maple syrup in there, too, and uh, it, it was spectacular. And you're welcome to steal the formula. It's up at the website. All my formulas, about 300 of them are up at the website. So good? I really froze that. Okay. It's 20 to 11. We should take a break or okay. sit down and answer some questions. Well, let's do that. Okay, let me right. get some chairs. Okay, because I have a topic. Oh, good. I brought a topic with me. All right. Thank you. Very Where'd you much. get the uh, Moving Brothers? <laughs> <laughs> They're identical twins. <laughs> Thank you very much. What? Fifty dollars. Oh, and worth it. Right. You start. I'm going to get some coffee. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a secret society. <laughs> there is of, yes, a secret society of people who've graduated from my class. There's been hundreds of them, and obviously they've opened up ice cream places all over the world. And as a graduate, you're entitled. This isn't a plug for the class. I forget why I'm doing this, but it's not a plug for the class. The, oh yes, I now I remember. There's a uh, as a graduate, you get. Uh, accepted to participate in discussions among all these ice cream people. And it's a kind of a unique group because these are people who've come with nothing, no background, and then gotten to a store or a cart or a, or, or a shared location, anything. 
And I read it uh, all the time. You guys just joined it, right? And I was reading recently about somebody said, somebody brought up a topic, and the topic was how long do you fluff your ice cream? And I, I really couldn't believe my eyes. Uh, and then I read, and people are responding, saying, well, I fluff for a minute. I fluff for five minutes. And, uh, and I went into the bathroom and tried to hang myself. Uh, the rope but, wasn't strong enough. But the rope broke, and, and unfortunately, I'm here to tell you about it. You know what she means, right? She meant, after you turn the refrigeration off, if you're making ice cream, I'm sorry, we'll edit you out, uh, don't worry. How long do you let the machine keep going so that your quantity uh, that you extract becomes greater? Obviously, picture a bowl with whipped cream in it, with, with cream in it. The longer you whip it, the more whipped cream you're going to get. May not taste better because you're adding a lot of air to it. And this is exactly what they're doing, some people. They're trying to squeeze another half a gallon out of their product by adding air to it, right? Air. Yeah. And that's, that's ludicrous. Don't we want our ice cream to be the, the, the most creamy, the most dense product we can? When I was growing up, Breyer's ice cream was king of the hill. And you would get a half gallon, and it was so creamy, so good. Well, you know what happened. Breyer's today is, is not the same. Ooh, I almost said garbage. Well, you can say garbage. It's pretty Breyer's, awful. Breyer's today is all air. If you take a half gallon and let it sit out, it'll, in 20 minutes, it'll be that. It'll be just a little puddle of milk. And they did it because, obviously, on 500 million gallons a week that they make, they want to make more money. But I just showed you that the difference, let's say instead of six gallons that you get out of your machine, you get seven, which that's a lot. That's, that's a lot. That's 15%. That's not going to happen. But let's say you get seven by fluffing it. Uh, do you make a whole lot more money? You don't really make a whole lot more, but now your product isn't what you wanted it to be in the beginning. It's not that, that creamy consistency anymore. It's got more air in it. So, and I was just reading this, and I, I'm, I'm astonished at that. We talked about that. I, I just don't get it. So fluffing, what's the real term for it? Overrun. Overrun, right. Uh, it's uh, against the law to go above 100% overrun. Well, they're not going 100%. I figure they're going, if they're getting, uh, I don't think they can get an extra gallon out of it. Well, you're getting, you're pulling close to 100, aren't you? I don't know. <laughs> you haven't checked. I don't know. When it's ready, I take it out. Right. Uh, I'd say by the cons actually the consistency you pulled out, you're at somewhere, somewhere around 70, 70 75. That, I figure 70. Which yes. I think is ideal. Yes, sir. The consistency. Oh, big difference. But haagen is running 16% butter fat. I, Breyers is what? Breyers got to be 10. 10. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, the haagen is very dense. Um, but it's a whole different market. And so which would you rather eat? Of course. Eat the haagen right. so that would That's the difference that's that we're talking about. You know, I'm trying to make haagen and and they're trying to make Breyers. Well, Jeff, it's interesting. The same thing happened to soft ice cream machines a number of years ago. Uh, back in the uh, 70s and all, everything was what we called gravity-fed machines. They put only 40% air in, 40% overrun, which is very low. And we built machines like that for the Navy. Uh, that's what Carvel was. That's what um, Dairy Queen was. And then they came along and they added pressurized pumps to the machines. And they said, instead of getting 40%, we can get you up to 80%. Look at all the profits you're going to Profit, get. Yeah. And what the store owner who fell for that wasn't realizing was, yes, I'm making 60% uh, more per soft ice cream cone, but my line has gone down from 20 people in line to two because the product tastes awful and the, and the public just disappeared. Uh, actually, I have to add, the product doesn't taste awful, but it's not the same product. The flavor is still there. It's spread out over a little more. Yeah, you don't get that bang. Uh, I think we, we all want to strive to make the best product we can. 
that's what that's number one when we're deciding how we're going to do this business number one make the best product number two charge a fair price fair for you fair for them and number three treat everybody great and that's it and then it's yours to screw up after that <laughs> uh, but that will carry you the whole way if you want make the best product and that's number one make the best product and they're taking the best product and they're cheapening it I, I don't get it yes Well, first let's clarify this. Soft serve is not ice cream. Soft serve is powder and water, right? It's soft serve. It's, it's yeah. below 10% fat. So it's not ice cream. It's not ice cream. <laughs> you now, can add a lot of flavor to it, but it's still not ice cream. Yeah, but to go on, what was the, the so question? As, as hard ice cream, like ice cream, you, you can't kind of gritty. No. Cone. This isn't gritty, is it? This is hard ice cream. <coughs> Everything we made here is hard ice cream. We just haven't put it through the freezing phase to make it harder to scoop, but it's not soft serve. It's coming out in a soft content, but it's genuine hard ice cream. This process is no different than what my grandfather was using back in 1903. This is called a rock salt and ice machine. And what you do is you put your dairy product into a cylinder, you surround it with rock salt and ice because ice melts and freezes at 32 degrees. By adding salt, we get it down to about 17 degrees. And then you turn a crank for 40 minutes. And that's homemade ice cream. A batch freezer is doing the same thing. We turned it sideways so we could get it out. Instead of salt and ice, it's uh, freon gas going around the cylinder, but it's the same process. It's homemade ice cream. This takes 45 minutes. That takes eight minutes. But it is genuine, old-fashioned, hard ice cream. Yes, sir. Soft serve at 10% is that ice cream? Uh, I don't know. Do they make soft serve 10%? Yeah. Technically, technically, uh, according to the uh, government, it would classify, it would qualify as far as fat content. But when they put together a soft ice cream mix, uh, think about it. It's got to leave Jeff's place. It's got to go out to your BMW and it's got to sit there without melting all over your leather seats. And so they put a lot of stabilizers and chemicals in there to keep it, to make it a slower melting product. Uh, so it's, I don't call it, I don't call it ice cream in the least because we don't have those worries. We're not trying to make it a slow melt. We're trying to make it delicious. Uh, so I, I have no time for soft ice cream machines whatsoever. I spoke to a lady yesterday who is building a truck and she wanted to put in a soft serve as well as a CB350. And I said, I'll tell you what, you know, she was adamant that she wanted the soft serve. They're, they're 25,000 starting point. And I said, I'll make you a deal. Leave the 25,000 in your bank, in the truck, figure out where you're gonna put the soft serve machine and run the electric lines to it. And then don't buy it. Because with our batch freezer, you've got Italian ice, you've got homemade ice cream of any air content you want. You've got gelato, you've got sherbet, you've got cream ice, you've got frozen lemonade, you've got custard. You have so many products, unless every third person walking into your business says, you don't have soft serve, and they walk away, then okay, I'm wrong, I'll put the machine in. But I'm not wrong, it's, it's not gonna happen. And I always profess, and I'm sure you've seen it, that. On this earth, there are six billion people. <laughs> and whether you're in East Asia or South Africa or South America, every one of those six billion people like one thing, ice cream. You could, whether they're six months old living in Zimbabwe or 106 living in San Diego, they like ice cream. And if you open up any place, all you need are those two words outside your store, open the store and they'll come. It's your job to keep them coming back and to keep them there. But ice cream will attract everybody. I don't think you can say the same thing about soft serve or frozen yogurt or gelato or any of the other junk that's being put out there. But ice cream, they'll come. And your customer base is literally everybody in the whole world, everybody. Can't say that about anything else. Can't say that about women's shoes, computer parts, cars, nothing. But ice cream, every single human being on this planet likes ice cream. 
I have an interesting idea for you as far as uh, looking for a location. Uh, I was talking to a couple the other day, <coughs> and they're about to take over uh, a shoe store. Um, and the uh, landlord is going to give them X amount of dollars to fix it up. And I said, this shoe store is going to be very expensive to convert because you're going to need electric lines, you're going to need plumbing, uh, you're going to need a lot of different things. So that location, uh, forgetting quality of location, just that physical building compared to what used to be, say, a, a diner or a, or a luncheonette or something, the luncheonette is going to be less expensive to move into. So here's something that I've seen. Uh, back in the se early 70s, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency changed the law and said, you can no longer have these metal gas tanks in the ground, 5,000 gallons of gas in the ground at your gas station. They're breaking, they're, they're deteriorating, they're leaking, they're polluting the environment. And they said, take them out. Well, it costs about $50,000 for a gas station to take those tanks out, so a lot of them went out of business. And the company owned stores, like if Mobile owned the store or Exxon, if it wasn't a great location, they just shut it down and let it sit there. After 20 years or 15 years, the EPA got tired of trying to get people to take tanks out of the ground that wouldn't take them out of the ground, and they set up a program where they would pay to get them out of the ground. We turned those into ice cream parlors. You've got a two-bay gas station, so you've got big glass doors, you've got a lot of open space, you've got a small office, you have your own parking where the pumps were. They made great locations. So I look around today and I say, thank goodness, yogurt is dead. Yogurt was a nice product. But it was nice if you were in Savannah, Georgia, and you were the only store. But when other people looked around and said, hey, he's making $1,000 a day on yogurt, I think I'll open one. And someone else opens one. In no time at all, we had 10 frozen yogurt stores in Savannah, Georgia. The population didn't change. There weren't enough people to support 10 frozen yogurt stores. So guess what? They all went out of business. And my customer, uh, Leopold's Ice Cream, remains, as he has since 1925, selling art ice cream. Uh, but those locations, the poor person behind, before you, and I feel sorry for them, they put so much money into electric and plumbing and lighting and maybe even some countertops, and they went belly up because it was the wrong product in the wrong place. Uh, and those stores now have been sitting for two or three years, and so the landlord's starting to soften up. They used to be, no, I've got a great location, I'm not dropping my price. The prices are coming down. I, and, and a lot of times the national chains put those stores in good locations. So in your travels, take a look at a yogurt store and see if there's a, an abandoned one that maybe you could walk in and save a lot of money on opening up there. You know, even their signs, leave their signs up, just change the name. Um, so it's something to think about that I think they'll make <coughs> some great locations and are making great locations. I've done a number of them. What do you think? Well, I, I did the other thing. I opened up where there was a gym uh, and a real estate office, and I took those and, and turned it into mine. Now, I didn't have a floor drain, and I didn't have a big plumbing experience there. I had to install that. But if you start a business on a limited amount of money, and I'm talking 15 and you're in, uh, $15,000, I can set you up in business in a week. And... Uh, on the eighth day, you're making money. Uh, you, you, know, you just equip it the way you need it. When I opened up, I had a nine-inch sink in, in a back room of a gym. And that, that's how I used to have to wash everything. Nine-inch sink, it's like this, right? Right. Uh, but you know, then you, you make money and you build out. And eventually, I took over the gym. Now I've got 3,800 square feet. And I'm trying to get the store next to me. Uh, but what he said is interesting. I have my eye on a gas station that's closed, and it's been closed for a few years now. Uh, it's angled on the corner. Oh, they're uh, nice. Oh, man. On an angle on a oh, corner, God. they're beautiful. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, and the, the pumps are gone. They took the pumps away, and all you've got is this perfect store with a big parking and everything, and it's right on the main road. And I... I just, I'm stopping myself from calling up and talking about it because I know it's an easy deal right in. Mm. Uh, so anyway, but anything can make a store. Uh, you can start with 700 square feet. The kitchen that I make all the, the product in, in mine is 56 square feet. It's eight feet by seven feet. It's, it's not a big area. Uh, Stores are shrinking. The average store 
15 years ago that I was working with was 1,900 to 2,300 square feet. And you have how many square feet do you have, Tammy? About 700. 700 yeah, with no seating area. Which I would love. So w what happened is pretty interesting, and it's why I have developed a line of smaller machines, not only uh, to hit lower price points, but uh, the physical size of the machine. Um, what happens is you want to open up a restaurant, and uh, I don't know, let's say the rent was uh, 2000 a month. Well, now uh, the rent has gone to 3000 a month. So the owner of the restaurant says, I need more tables. There's an old expression, the money's made at the tables, not in the kitchen. And what it means is, if I've got 10 tables, I can make so much money a night. If I've got 15 tables, I can make more money at night. So I put more tables out where you are, and I've only got so much square feet, so guess what shrinks? The chef's kitchen. <laughs> we make his kitchen smaller and smaller and smaller because it's, co it's costing money. He's the one who's making the product, but the money's made out there at the tables. More tables, more money. So they look at the 24 and 12, and they say, which they used to buy, and say, it's just taking up too much space. But if I get a CB350 with a stand, I can tuck it away in a corner, or even a 200, uh, I can uh, put it away in a corner, and, and make the two or three products that I want every night, and it's not taking up a lot of space. So that was some of the genesis of these smaller machines. So uh, the 700 square feet used to be unheard of. Now I tell people, I, I don't know if it was you or someone said the difference between 700 square feet and 2,000 square feet is a whole lot of mopping. <laughs> and that's about it. I'd rather have the 700 square feet. It'd be like the British. I mean, the British, you go down the street and the British are online, what they call a queue. They get online just because there's a line. You know, we do it in New York for the, the soup Nazi. You know, people get online just because the, the, the guy has got a line out in front of his store. And uh, I would love to have a line in front of a store because there's no seating or no room in the store. People will look at the line and go, it must be good. I so. pay people to stand in line outside. My <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't come up. You don't Five pay enough. Five bucks a night. I Five bucks seven. a night. They stand out there. Seven. Seven. Good. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk about um, like black breathing once you make it? To <laughs> no, no. He's <laughs> all Maybe wrong. Difference of, a difference of opinion? Or long knives are going to come well, out? Well, I'll tell you the story, and this is true almost word for word. May I know Steve, what, six years or something? Mm -hmm. and, and way back when we met, he would say to me, you know, I can take the ice cream out of my blast freezer, put it into a, uh, what do you call them, blast freezer, hardening cabinet? Yeah. And then put it into a serving in cabinet. 10 hours, I can serve it. I can sell it. And I looked at him and I said, you know, I can take the ice cream out of your batch freezer and put it in a cheap Sam's Club freezer, and 10 hours later, I can sell it. And then I said, how much are those things? Well, how much are they, $6,000? Yeah. So there, I've, I've just saved all of you $6,000. You don't need it. And I will tell you that, go and, ahead. And by the way, it's a single purpose piece of equipment. You can't store stuff in there, but you can put stuff in there for a transition period. Of how long? No, he's wrong. You can store, if you want to buy a 50 pound bag of walnuts, put them in the freezer. They won't deteriorate. But let me Put say my a Sam's Club freezer, 150 bucks. Let me let me say my part about it. You can follow what Jeff says, and you'll do fine. You'll be okay. But I guarantee you, 99% of you in this room, because I've heard from all your customers, uh, that we kind of joke about it, and it doesn't come back to you because you won't allow allow me on your secret uh, location. Go ahead, set finish. They've all bought hardening cabinets because I'm a manufacturer. And what I do is, what, what Jeff is going to put in simple terms, and it's not wrong, but let's, let's get that straight. He, if he was building ice cream machines, he would be buying three sheets of stainless steel today to make a machine. And then tomorrow he'd buy three more sheets. And the day after he'd buy three more sheets. That's kind of costly and kind of busy work to do. I buy two tractor trailer loads worth of uh, stainless steel. Well, let's and now, I, uh, let me finish, okay. now I've got enough in here for two weeks or 10 days worth of stainless steel to build my machines. It's called inventory. So, uh, Jeff, how many, how many of those freezer cabinets do you have? Because you used to have one. 
I have 13. 13. He's got 13 115 volt little cabinets all whirring away. Uh, Duke Energy comes by every three months and gives them another award for their best customer. You know, only, only Tampa International uses more electricity. Wrong. It's totally inefficient what no, he's doing. And he, has, he has 13 of them because, because he won't buy a hardening cabinet, so he's got to have 13 because they can't keep up the job. No. That's why it's no. 13. The reason I have that is because I, don't, I won't have a walk-in. This has nothing to do with the hardening cabinet. Mm -hmm. A hardening cabinet is so you can sell your product that night, right? If I had 13 of those, I'd buy a walk-in. Forget in. that. I'd buy a walk-in. I won't have a walk-in. Why won't I have a walk-in? Why, Why won't I have a walk-in? those broke, or if it breaks. Sure. I don't want all my eggs in one basket. How, how many cars, well, you don't count. How many cars do you drive every day? Do you have one car? No, I actually have two. Okay, well, the average person drives one car. My wife drives one car. She doesn't keep a backup car in case it breaks down. Yes. But if it did? If it did? If that freezer broke down she and would have all my stuff is in the walk-in, then would what have, do I do? People would have insurance on it. Insure, that's Your customer doesn't want to care that you have insurance, you're going to get paid have back. Any of your cabinets, they come for ice cream and you don't cabinets, have any. Have any of your cabinets broken down? Uh, no. No. Okay. One uh, last so, week. All right, one. So last week, after one all the freezer years, broke down. So, so what are the odds? Uh, I'm not playing the odds. I'm, <laughs> okay. It's just it's, it's all about inventory well, let me is what say it comes this. down to. 13 freezers at about $140. One walk-in freezer at about $9,000. You You're, tell me. Your electric bill For, is through oh, the Oh, that's roof. nonsense. It's that is absolute roof. nonsense, the electric bill. It doesn't mean a hill of beans. Uh, instead of, it's just like your, your ice cream. Instead of paying... Uh, $430 for your electric. Because I have those freezers, I pay $480. Who cares? All right, it's I got nothing. a challenge for you. Go ahead. On this secret society that you have, which I'm not invited to, <laughs> put a question out there and ask them how many have bought other than those cabinets. How many for people freezing? still think the world is flat? How, I ask your people. You trained them. How many people have bought those cabinets and have 13 of them like you did? How many of these are going to buy them? How many of these people are going to buy them after Most being educated? Most of them. Are and you? I'm telling you, within a year, that they're going to outrun it. Yes, yeah, so you had a question it? over here. No, no, I, I just... Oh, you were just stretching? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, think, I think two pieces of equipment are, exist solely for the manufacturer's profit. And I think one of them is a blast freezer, and the other one is, is the biggest hoax of all, and that's a dipping cabinet. Those two pieces of equipment, which you're looking at more than $10,000, take that $10,000, put it in the bank, buy a bigger machine, start your business. You don't need them. Now, I, when I started, I didn't need you them. You put the ice cream on the dipping cabinet. <laughs> in the, just in the chest and take it out? Holy cow, what a revolutionary idea. <laughs> well, to you. Do you want to hear why you, why, I'm going to tell you in 30 seconds and then you'll never consider buying a dipping cabinet. Okay? Excuse me. Ready? Okay. I, we'll edit that out. <laughs> a dipping cabinet. 16 tubs there, right? With uh, something called a sneeze guard. Now, what's the purpose of the dipping cabinet? So people can see the ice cream. Don't have that. Okay. But they're gonna, they, you want them to see the ice creams. And that's why dipping cabinets are there. Why do you want them to see the ice creams? So they can come up, stand online, and do this. Mm. What's in that one? Oh, can that. I taste that one? That's right. Okay. Can I try? Now, wait a, one second. <laughs> now, <laughs> when they do decide on one after the line is building, all right, I'll have that. So now you open it up, and the biggest problem with ice cream is air. Now you open it up, air is shooting through all those 16 tubs, forming little ice crystals, because if you're lucky enough to be busy, that thing's opening and closing 100 times in a night. More. In my place, it would open and close 200 times a night. All that air is forming crystals on your ice cream. And what does, you're not going to serve that, are you? The next morning you come in, there's ice crystals, all that white stuff. You've seen it in dipping cabinets. They look disgusting. You're not going to serve that. And now you've defeated your whole purpose because people are walking by going, mm, mm. All right. And how about when it drips in between the tubs and all that white 
holes are all disgusting with dripping stuff. You clean, like a normal business. If kids you spill don't on the clean. Floor. All right, kids we're gonna, don't clean. Hold on, we're going to do a live demonstration. Kids don't scrape down the sides like they should every five minutes, but you're letting air in. And the last thing is homemade ice cream is not pretty. It's bland looking. It's beige. Because we don't add, it's not like you go into Baskin Robbins and there's blue ice cream, blue, and there's red so ice cream, and there's pink ice cream. You don't use a visual dipping cabinet. You use a visual dipping cabinet. You use the old-fashioned floppy door. They work. For, I need a volunteer to come up and prove Jeff wrong. Come on. Oh, you here can't we go. prove me wrong. Sure, I can. Here is, <laughs> here is ice cream that was made two days ago. Yeah, look where it is. It's up to the top, and you had a cover on it. Don't worry about but that. You That's take, not the point. That's not the, not the point. But you leave Hold that on, on here. Quiet down we for a minute. We have to do the demonstration. We have a live demonstration. Ice cream that was made two days ago. You have to turn over here so they can see. Wait. Two days ago, and it's in his chest freezer. Go ahead. Scoop it. What, are you weak? What's the matter with you? I should have picked someone stronger. He knows uh -huh. that. It's real hard. It's real hard. He knows and it's only not. two days old. Do you think we have the answer for that? It's only two I days old. I won't even answer you. Abby, tell Abby, them what to do. You're supposed to let it sit out and thaw. They oh, I'm going to let it sit out and melt no, all the way around the edges. You temper it. If I had it in a dipping cabinet, I wouldn't have to do that. If you had I'm, a dipping cabinet, have ice all over the top. I no, I wouldn't. And it would taste like the other flavor next to it because they dripped into it. No. I dip out of my gallon containers. Where are they sit? Where are they sit? They're in the freezers. Behind the counter, there's two, three freezers. And when people order the ice cream off of my gorgeous menu board, beautiful menu board, all different colors, all different descriptions. Now they don't walk up, stand and clog the line and say, can I try that? Because no, no sin. Because the next person is then going to say, well, he tried. I, I want to try that one. And then they're going to try that one. And, and the line is building and building. And eventually people are going to leave your store or not come back because I don't want to wait in line for ice cream. So the tubs are in the freezer that you have to open up and get a scoop Correct, of correct. The but they're all closed. Right. They all have covers you have on them. You have to open that freezer to get into it. Of course. So Eric gets in then too. No, the right. tubs are all closed. Okay, Jeff, take the I challenge. Take the challenge. Right. Put it up there, and we'll discuss okay. it in two okay. months. Okay. Folks, tune in in two months when we have the next class, and Jeff will give us the results. Don't of buy a how many cabinet. people of his? Don't buy How one. many of his customers have bought hardening cabinets? Yes. I wonder if you're busy. My shop is pretty busy. My shop is pretty busy, and my, I have kids that work there. Do you think Why not? They're too lazy. Oh no, you don't dip from there. All you do is open it, take your gallon out, put it on the counter, dip your ice cream, put your gallon back. Let me tell you, we see 200 people in four hours. That's working pretty good, right? How much ice cream do you sell at four in the afternoon? Nothing, we're not open. How about two in the afternoon? We're not open. Well, then you've got all that ice cream that hasn't tempered up yet. She's open from 11 in the morning till 10 at night. You're the exception. No. By opening and closing the freezer all night, the ice cream is tempering. Oh, you're opening and closing it, the temperature in your freezer is rising all night long. 13 dipping By, cabinets. 13, 13 no, chest freezers. No, that's inventory in the back. All you need is one of those up front. All you need is one hardening cabinet like over there, half that size, and you don't have that problem. You don't know, run 13 Waste of them. Waste of money. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I got into this business on a very wasn't? limited amount of money, and we're making, we're doing very well. So do what I do, make the money. Don't give it to these people who don't warrant it. When your gallon container, what the price points for those gallon containers versus those two and a half, three gallon containers? We don't sell gallons. We have uh, basically two sizes, six dollars and eight dollars. Right, but if an individual wanted to get the containers for a gallon containers. Or $50. Yeah, don't sell anything larger than a pint container for out the door. Right. Because if you're, it's the haagen uh, method of doing it. They're, right now they're 513 for a pint. Um, but I see pint prices going up $6, $8, no problem at all. Let's, let's call it uh, $7. 
a pint of ice cream is seven dollars and i'm going to run in the store pick it up and take it home i'm worth it i'm worth seven bucks i had a bad day i'm going to drown myself in ice cream i had a great day i'm going to i beat jeff in the competition i'm going to reward myself seven dollars worth it now i sell a half gallon fourteen dollars thirteen ninety nine well gee i don't know if i'm worth that maybe i better just buy some briars so I don't get in trouble at home for spending that much money on me. And that's really the rationale behind it. If your portions, if your containers for takeout, you don't do takeout, do you? Well, if they want to take it, they can take they it. They can take it. But otherwise, if you're doing home uh, takeout containers, <laughs> uh, do it in pints only. Because I know a pint isn't enough ice cream because I'm going to eat half of it on the way home. And uh, I've got to have some for my wife. So I'm going to bring home two pints. So I'm getting the mint chip. She's getting the coconut. <laughs> so... You'll buy two pints, but you won't buy a quart. Uh. Uh. <laughs> You're open from six till ten. You sell alcohol ice cream. It's completely different. No, we sell different all world. different kinds of ice cream. But you sell alcohol ice cream too. All it's a, different it's a whole kinds. different world. So it's fifty people an hour, roughly one customer a minute. That's fine. One customer a minute. But if I had a dipping cabinet and I tried to do that. We're going to get clogged up with what's in that, what's in that, how do you make that, can I have a sample of this, can I have a sample of that, can I have one of those, can I mix two flavors in a thing, can I put three flavors in a cup, how about four flavors in a cup? And if you were the traditional store and you needed I to serve... I am a traditional store. You're not store. a traditional store. If you were a traditional store and you had to sell five portions at 2 o'clock and nine portions at 4 o'clock... I'd close my all, doors because that, you know, that's not cost efficient. That's not what they're doing. Yes. Yeah. So we have the dipping cabinet, but they can't come in. So we're an ice cream stand. People come up to our window. Our freezers are in the back. And we don't have the glass. It's just the flip top. Um, and we put covers on them. But I know for us, your method certainly wouldn't work. Not that I wouldn't want it. It just it wouldn't. Because I have people who are like, I want a scoop of strawberry. I want a scoop of vanilla. I want a scoop of blueberry. It'd be like holding the cone, pulling out the tubs. How do you make that work? You, st <laughs> you stop it tomorrow morning. You don't mix Tomorrow flavors. morning, there's no mixing of flavors in your store. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Oh, no. yeah, it would. See, it everybody... Would. You know why it would work? If you made your own ice cream, and the ice cream was spectacular. When you make your own ice cream, you're not going to be hip to mixing flavors. You won't want that to happen. Because when somebody says, I want my butter pecan, and can I have a scoop of strawberry next to it? You're going to cringe. Because they're going to have strawberry melting into well, butter I pecan. How? Some of the combinations that... How many other people in this room are wearing a tie-dye shirt? <laughs> you, you are unique. You are unique to yourself. No, I, I think it's really unique. It's just I'm looking at our business and I'm like, there's no way. Of course there is. Of course there is. Is your dipping cabinet on wheels? No. Well, get some wheels under it. Wheel it out to the dumpster. <laughs> and in its place... In its place. Tell me where the dumpster is. Let him go get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. Taking Jeff's van to go get it. In its place, put a nice, inexpensive. How much is that dipping cabinet? How much are dipping cabinets? Two thousand. How much? Two thousand. Two thousand. Five hundred. And how many openings? Huh? How many openings? Sixteen. Eight. <laughs> So every time you open it, all eight are getting... No, they're flop doors. They're Only flop two are exposed. Yeah. And we so the air doesn't get in there? No. You had a question back there. I wonder how much competition Jeff is. Everybody has... I have haagen about a mile and a half away from me. Oh, they're and starving. I have, and I have Peach Wave about a half That's a mile right. away, and I, which is frozen yogurt, haagen ice cream. And then I have Ambrosia, which is near the haagen uh, selling soft serve. So I have everything right near me. Doesn't matter. I make the best ice cream in the world. And, yeah, and that's why everybody come. knows it. Everybody knows that I make the best ice cream in the world. And you will too, if you take my course. You will too. <laughs> Should we do a book plug? 
<laughs> really, uh, it's, it's not hard to make the best ice cream in the world. Uh, I put mine right up there with haagen except that I have better flavors or different, more varieties of flavors. What's your question? Forget the, oh, that I store the ice cream in? Right. Yes. Uh, do you Cambro. Cambro. It's in your book. The book you bought, it's in there. There's all sorts of stuff about equipment and suppliers and supplies, but Cambro are the good ones. From, with the two and a half gallon containers that are sitting over there, nowadays the price points for an empty uh, container with the lid is like five dollars. Oh, more than <laughs> that for that one. Where are you calling, where are you calling from? Philadelphia. You're talking about those containers? No, you, you call up a uh, plastic can in Lemoinster, Massachusetts. And uh, you're buying them wholesale direct from the manufacturer. Or just go get them at Restaurant Depot. Or Restaurant Depot. They're not five bucks. Restaurant Depot no, has no every way. size, every lid. Easy. Yeah. Back. Yes. The, the plastic is, is reusable, and I find that they last a year and a half before they break up. Cardboard is one time and out. Uh, so they're great for wholesale because if you go into a restaurant and say, now I want my tubs back and I expect you to wash them and store them in this tiny kitchen, they're going to throw you out on your ear. This is why you can outdo haagen easily if you're catering or selling to restaurants because the haagen salesman comes in and he says, we, we, uh, you have to buy 16 tubs, uh, 14 tubs, and we deliver once every two weeks. And the chef goes, where am I going to store 14 tubs, and how do I know eight days from now what flavor I want? You come in and say, we have a minimum order of two tubs. We can deliver every third day. Oh, and by the way, obnoxious executive chef who knows everything on earth, uh, tell us if you have any ideas on how we can improve our product and we'll make it just for you. You'll, you'll, you'll get their business. Here's one other quick thing. The space that that tub takes up, um, these gelato pans, um, are really pretty good. I didn't really like gelato pans. But I buy these. These are so supposedly dis uh, disposable once and out. I use them about five or six times, gelato supply. But if you've got one round tub in the chef's freezer, I can take one, two, three, four of these and almost in the same space give him four flavors of frozen desserts for every tub of haagen So that's that's fantastic. Yes. Yeah, they do have lids. They now, have be, those lids that the people at the restaurants won't put back on. And, and don't sell to supermarkets. Uh, I mean, I can't tell you the number of customers. I turn customers away because I'm trying to make them successful. And when I hear just a disaster, I, I tell them. And I hide behind the fact that I'm a New Yorker. I'll give you an opinion on anything. Um, they tell me they, they've got a CB350 and they just got... Uh, their ice cream into Whole Foods. They immediately want to go out and buy a 44 quart, $38,000, $39,000 machine. And I'll tell them, no, uh, it's gone to your head. It's, it's, it's a big deal. You, can, you go to a cocktail party and say, my ice cream's so good, it's in Home Depot. Boy, I, uh, not Home Depot, um, Whole Food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in Whole Food because Whole Foods MO is they'll bring in five and they'll all give you freezer space quite easily, easy to get into Whole Foods. And then they sit back and watch and see who, who wins. And you're up against four other companies, and if, if you don't win, you're out. But the ego, that desire to go to a cocktail party, in my case, uh, it would be McDonald's, to go to a cocktail party and say, huh, my machines are in every McDonald's. That, make me, that made me, make me feel good in ego, but I'm losing my shirt because they wanted the machine so cheap and they want service 24 hours a day. Uh, supermarkets work on a 2% margin. That means for every dollar a supermarket pulls in, they make two cents profit. So I can be in the supermarket for three years and I'm doing great. Jeff comes along and he's two cents, three cents, four cents less than me. They never heard of me. There is no such thing as loyalty. I'm out the door and Jeff's in there. But Plus, I'm on a lonely country road with no other stores around me, and you can't even see my store at night because it's so dark there. So there. You had to knock on the door and go, Joe sent me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Jeff, 
Jeff, uh, all your storage is in one gallon containers now? Yes. So that's how you can get away with not having the blast freezer because it's freezing just as quickly? Sure. As that of course. Freezer, of course. Of course. Now. The one gallon container is a good idea, but that thing, that chest freezer was designed for you to bring home frozen pizzas, frozen green beans, they're already frozen, the work has already been done. I can show you quite easily, I can fill that cabinet up with warm ice cream, which is 20 degrees. Warm ice cream, I can fill it a third of the way, and by tomorrow it'll be nicely hardened. That's good. But if my volume is such that I need to fill that thing halfway or three quarters of the way, that temperature is going straight up. Oh, you try taking a lot of fresh made soup and put it in your refrigerator warm and see if it doesn't take the whole refrigerator up to 60 degrees in about uh, a half hour and it doesn't come back down quickly. So yes, you can do it. I recommend uh, when you're starting out with a CB350, I agree with Jeff. But when you get to the second cabinet or the third cabinet, it's time to relook at what you're doing. I make 100 gallons of ice cream a week. 13 cabinets. I make 100 gallons of ice cream in a week. Did we have any problem fitting it into inventory? We had our choice where to put it. We make double batches. We never put them in the same place. It works smoothly. You just said my point. I just said you can't put all your ice cream in there because the temperature will go up, right? No. Can you put, can you put 50, 60 gallons of ice cream in that cabinet today? Sure. And it won't warm up? Oh, it's no, it'll warm up. It warm I'll bet up. we've put ice cream in there right now. I'll bet you that cabinet's not 10 below. I'll bet you it's plus 10. The ice cream is freezing as it should. And it's developing ice crystals no. because it's freezing too slow. No, I won't have it that. Will. I won't have that. No. It's not developing I ice crystals. And did you see him fill the whole cabinet with ice cream? Yeah. yeah. And we started When we started in the morning, it was pretty well empty. And when did he sell it? the ice cream? What? Did he sell it out that night? We can. No, we didn't sell it out. Okay. But we'll sell it out within a week. That cabinet can't do it. It's a, it's a quarter horsepower. I'm using three horsepower. You get in there. I'll close the lid. Let's see how long you survive. <laughs> Let's see how long you stay nice and toasty Let warm. Let me just tell you, when I come out of there, I'm going to be mad as hell. <laughs> He'll be frozen in an hour. <laughs> a Thompson Popsicle. No more talking. <laughs> okay. What are we doing now? We're going to eat. A lunch? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Enough of this lovemaking. Let's okay. eat. <laughs> so there you go. You see both sides of the story. The right side, the wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> the, the right side and the insane side. <laughs> Plain as day. Plain Couldn't as be day. more different. So thanks. If you have any more questions, you just ask them anytime. Yeah. Okay? Okay? So yeah. And then we're going to have lunch. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not at square. Unless no, you, you listen to him, you're at you square. You do one. your own homework and you look at your own if story. If you want to make what's money, have you. a great life, do what I do. Simple. Do what I do. You won't spend a lot of money. 15 grand, imagine getting into business $15,000 with a brand new batch freezer? We're in a whole different. No, you're not. You're on this planet just like everyone else. It works. All right, let's eat. Jack, you want to take down our mics? So, what I thought, I grabbed uh, some stuff. And the third thing that I was going to make is pina colada cheesecake. <laughs> Got to be good, right? Pina colada cheesecake. Uh, or we can make, yeah, let's do that. Let's, and so now we'll make what, what I thought of a name for it. We'll call it toasted pineapple ice cream. Uh, we're not going to actually toast it. We're going to fake everybody out. Toasted pineapple ice cream, uh, because I grabbed, as I was running out last night, a bag of brown sugar. So that'll be our toasty part of toasted, uh, what are we doing? Toasted pineapple. Toasted pineapple. Uh, okay? It'll be good. I mean, it, it, of course it'll be good. So what we'll do, now, by the way, Sometimes you have to rinse the machine out between flavors. Now, Steve and I disagree on this, but remember who makes ice cream. It's not the color. That's not true, right? We talked about that. It's not whether you go, you can, I go all the time from chocolate to vanilla or chocolate to pina colada or whatever, because what I'm concerned with is ingredients. I don't want to make bananas foster ice cream, which we do, 
and have bananas going into the next flavor. Rum raisin, I don't want raisins going into my mint chocolate chip. So I'll lay it out, I, the color doesn't matter to me. If I go from chocolate, plain chocolate, to mint chocolate chip, not gonna hurt anything. Because the amount of chocolate that's left in the machine is, is so small that you don't have to worry about it. So color is not what's important, it's ingredients. An errant chocolate chip is fine. I'm okay with a chocolate chip finding its way somewhere, uh, which they will. But I don't want a raisin finding its way somewhere. You know, uh, uh, and this happened in our, everything happens in your store when you open up. But somebody brought a raisin up to the girls and said, there's a bug in our ice cream. You know, try to tell them it's not a bug. So what did I do? I went like this. And I said, it's a raisin. But we gave them a free ice cream and they're fine. It's always a free ice cream. And don't think that's not a motivating factor for some people, you know? There's a uh, bug here, uh, free ice cream. So we'll start with, in my machine, my machine is a 24, this is a 12. It's the same size from where you're sitting, same size machine. The only difference is the cylinder. Mine is a 24 quart, this is a 12 quart. In the 24, I went from a six to a 24. Uh, in the 24, the measurement for a batch of ice cream is perfect. It's this, it's one bag, one bladder. So it works out real good. Uh, but because I'm at half, then I'll just use. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. I'll just use, it's the teacher in me. I'll use five quarts of, uh, of mix, right, right? Tell him to get off the phone. So, five, what? Oh, five quarts. Since there's no line for five, we'll go between four and six. Brilliant, right? Okay, so that's the mix. Now I don't have a, I usually keep these on file cards with the rep, but I don't know what I'm doing now, so we're gonna wing it. So we'll go with, get in the habit of that. <laughs> of course, I've done it the other way where I pour it in, it comes shooting right out. All right, so we'll add this. I don't like that thing. So we'll add five quarts of mix. And uh, what are we making? We're making toasted pineapple. So we'll add this stuff, which is frozen concentrated pineapple juice. Doggy here? Yes. You don't have to do that on my account. Uh, now I looked at the shelves over there and since he promoted it, I picked up Green Mountain uh, Pineapple all natural pineapple stuff. I've never used it, but let's give it a shot, all right? Pi it says natural pineapple flavor. Shake well. <laughs> and it says starting point usage three quarters of an ounce per gallon. So figure one ounce, right? All right, one ounce. Looks good to me. <laughs> one ounce. Now, we're gonna add the toasty part, which is uh, brown sugar. Brown sugar.
Brown sugar. Girls, ladies, what is brown sugar? Molasses and sugar, right? Uh, whoops. I guess we'll add the whole bag. Uh, the bag is uh, the bag is one pound, I think. <laughs> Does anybody have any doubt that this is going to be good? You see what's going into it? It's just good stuff. It's not like we're adding, you know, some ridiculous thing in here, like uh, chicken stock. It's got to be good. Now, how the, uh... no, huh? I'll tell you what, let's taste it first. But I think we're going to be adding the pineapple. We don't have to add a lot of pineapple, it's good. Uh, just a vote, should we add the pineapple? Just a little. A little. A little. A little. A little. You tell me when. A little more, right? What? So, a little more? Yeah. Okay. This is almost like you're making it. That's enough? Okay. Anybody want more? No. Okay. There you go. Now, we're not going to add any of this pineapple juice, are we? No, because it's mostly water. All right, let's uh, get it rolling. Fire it up. Okay, we're good. It's going to be good. Good question. She said the Italian ice was three two one, which was no the the sherbet was three two one. Uh, the sherbet is three two one. Three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, one quart of ice cream mix. Italian ice is is uh, three quarts of water, two pounds of sugar, and flavor. Uh, it's kind of simple. Uh, and if you want, I'll give you those. Well, you can write them down. Uh, which is a great thing to ask because if you're making, a friend of mine owns a cream ice store, which, Italian ice with a dairy, and just like we made before. And he has 150 flavors up here of cream ice. And it's a wildly popular store, wildly popular. 15, 18 years now already. And uh, it's down in South Florida. And any flavor that you can think of, he's got it in cream ice. It's all he sells. It's all he sells is cream ice. And he makes a ton of money, a ton of money, because he has the uh, eight ounce Dixie cups, the stuff you have in the bathroom, and the 12 ounce Dixie cups. And when you order the, your, your cream ice, it's Wop, wop, spoon, money. That's it. Of course, there's no toppings. It's cream ice. So it's wop, wop, doop, spoon, done. And all night long, all night long. Um, and it's 450. So some money there. That cream ice, you're working on about 75% profit. Silly. It's just silly. Uh, no, you had all your questions before. Okay, what is it? Got to have your ingredients and the and the and the nutrition content. Every one. Hmm? Everything. If it's for consumption, you have to do that. Uh, way around it 
It's <laughs> the way around it. The way around it is you, you pack them as they ask for it. It's not prepackaged. And then they're just getting your product to go. But if you prepackage, you have to have nutritional content and ingredients. You don't need to do that. You're going to be making so much money, you won't have time for prepackaging. For what? You don't have to do it for, the question is, do you have to do it for uh, cart sales, fairs, festivals, stuff like that? No, of course not. Because the idea was, if I had a line of 25 people, are the 25 people going to wait for me? Yes, they will. They will? Yes. Thank you, God. <laughs> okay. What's it, what was the answer? If he's at a festival and he has to scoop all that ice out of the people that are going to stand in line, if he's got a line of 25, will they wait? They will wait. They will wait. Just like in the store, I freak when I see the line getting longer than 15 people, which it does. But I, I always worry, are they going to walk out? You know, no. They're there. They know what you got. They're hanging around. They're there. <laughs> Can I add back to his question? Sure. Right. You know what it's called? It, and you've seen the signs, hand dipped. All right, let's cut the chit chat. The, the, the thing that you'll put up as a sign, hand dipped, which means that when they come and they order a pint of rum raisin, you're not reaching down, giving them a pint goodbye. You're taking the empty container, you're do, the girls are doing it or whatever, putting a top on, and then they go. And we do milkshakes too. And of course our sign says hand dipped milkshakes. Doesn't make any sense, but they're hand dipped milkshakes. What else would they be? You're not gonna dip them with your feet. They're hand dipped milkshakes. But the milkshakes, our milkshakes are 32 ounces, one quart. <laughs> and they're, they're significant. They were good though, weren't they? Mike certainly liked our milkshakes. <laughs> Okay, anything else while I waste time here? Yes, you again? His, his concern was if you're out in the elements in the open air and you're, you're constantly putting them from your car, are you lowering the temperature of the Sure, your of course. So that's why the individual container came to mind. Well, they have come up, the question is if you're working from a cart and you're constantly opening it up, does it raise the temperature? Of course it raises the temperature. There are three different methods of keeping that thing cold. They've come up with these, they look like a top hat upside down and your tub fits in it and those keep it cold. Uh, you freeze them prior, they're expensive, they're like $80 a piece. Uh, the other way is they sell these electromagnetic plates that line your cart and they keep it cold. Uh, nothing is 100%. Steve has a better answer to that than I do. What's Steve, that? selling ices out of a cart, keeping those tubs cold. Of course, there's that top hat thing that the thing fits in, yeah. and there's the plates that the the galvanized steel plates that line them. What else? Uh, dry ice. There's dry ice, simple, probably right? the best way too. Dry yeah, ice, because right? You can control it. You can sure. move the dry ice around. Right. Uh, you can buy a more expensive. I don't have a mic on. Yeah, thanks. Um, you can uh, do a more expensive way. Uh, people make carts that have refrigerated units around them, uh, usually uh, glycol, you know, antifreeze. And so you freeze down your cart overnight, and um, so it's nice and cold, and then you just put it on your trailer and take it out the next day, and it'll stay cold for many hours. Um, one of the more expensive ones, but the best one on the market is Nelson. Uh, Nelson Manufacturing, they make a great one. Uh, that's cold walls and uh, you just uh, freeze it down the night before and then put your product in there. What are we making? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's well, uh, I'm in search of my uh, blender. Toasted pineapple ice cream. Oh yeah. Toasted pineapple. Wow. Uh, 
And uh, the, you, you know, I have to realize those carts have been around for 80 years. People have been selling at fairs and festivals. So they work if you, if you do it the right way. I wouldn't know how to do it. Uh, but I know that in my class, people have said to me they have both methods. The, the top hat is relatively new, right? The, yes. Those black, uh, you have one somewhere. We have one around here somewhere, and we'll find it uh, eventually. And you freeze those prior? Yes. And you put and it you in just and put they, your tub into right. it. What are you doing? Getting ready to torture you. Oh, you're going to use the whisk or? Yes. What are you making? Uh, this is for the dairy free. Oh, okay. Yes. The uh, first thing you get from Sam. Uh, who was I talking to before that, that told me that they go down? They go down to minus 10, minus 15. Yeah, that was you, right? At least minus 15 for a cheap freezer. Minus 15. Come on, you know? Minus 20. Mine go down to, I've seen mine at 18, 19. You don't use a, a blast or a... All at once, do I use a blast freezer? <laughs> oh no, let's not start this again. <laughs> I didn't put them up to that. Did they have lunch and lose their memories? <laughs> Yeah, right. Who wanted real ice cream? You did, right? Real, okay. You'll get it. You'll get real ice cream. Almost, almost. <laughs> Toasted pineapple. Toasted pineapple. Ah, what could be bad? You saw what went in, can't be bad, right? We have more spoons, right? How would you like a hot and cold water hose reel on the wall here? A hot and cold water what? Hose reel, where you can pull the hose out oh. and fill your machine to spray Of course, and then you, <laughs> you have floor drains, right? Yeah. That's what my friend Evan does. He has two 224s, mm -hmm. and he has floor drains, and he just uh, hoses them down. Yeah. Opens the door, hoses them down. Yeah, I'm looking to develop it. Really? Boy, that would be great, but you need a floor drain. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking more for the barrel, that you have a bucket in front of the barrel, and you can hose down the door. and in the barrel. got to have a floor drain. Well, if you had the money for it. Okay. That doesn't fit the fifteen thousand uh, no, dollar. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Oh. Oh. I'd say we're ready. Is that in your way? The uh, the top thing is there if you want to use it. It's on top. Okay. Okay. We ready? You ready? Should we fluff it? No. No, <laughs> no fluffing. Fluff it. Fluff it. She, I think she fluffs for five minutes. You ever see a girl fluff for five minutes? Cut that. Careful, Jeff. Jack, you got to cut that. <laughs> yeah, flag the tape. <laughs> we okay. spend a lot of time flagging tapes around here. All right. There it is. Okay, so let's try this. Where the uh, the spoons are, got it. What? My spoons. 
How do you wind up to be first all the time? That's why I'm sitting right here, because I'm ready. You know what they're all saying? They're all saying, if this idiot can do that, I can do that. Not hardly. That'll be a story. What? Thank you. Yeah, freeze this down for like 10 hours before you would serve it to customers? Yeah, but you know what? I could serve it like this. Ted Drews it comes right out of the machine. Ted Drews is an amazing. Comes straight out of the machine. That's frozen your, custard, though. Oh, it goes right into your cup and then. Yeah. And they make the concretes. Yes. Ted Drews is the finest I've tasted in my whole life. Wouldn't you say so, Steve? I thought our uh, vanilla ice cream the other day was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. As far as it being custard. Yeah. Thank you. What? Can I just have, I mean, just a little job. I had heart surgery about five years ago. Eight years ago. Thanks. That's good. Thanks. That's good, isn't it? That's pretty good. Mike? Very creamy. Very creamy. Very Ten. Ten percent butter fat. One ounce of the green Five quarts. None for you? None for you? Creamy ice cream, right? We got ice cream. Hmm. One thing we didn't touch on uh, about the butter fat, and someone asked me a question during a break, is uh, as I mentioned before, 10% butter fat is the federal minimum to call it ice cream. And back up in the north, uh, or Chicago, or out in the upper Midwest, any places along there, California, they're all going to be running 14 or 16% butter fat. Now, to put it in perspective, uh, what does it mean to go from 10 to 12 or 12 to 14? Whole milk in the supermarket is 4% fat, 4% milk fat or butter fat. Low fat milk is 2% uh, milk fat. And look at the taste difference between whole milk and low fat milk by just going 2%. So if we go up 2% uh, from 10 to 12, there should be a dramatic taste difference, 12 to 14, and then pretty much the max around the country is 16. We had in New York what I called the fat wars. Uh, and that was, if you're selling 14%, I'm going to sell 16 for no reason better, no other reason, but I want to be declared the richest ice cream in New York. I don't think that makes a good reason for a good eating ice cream. Always the goal is to make a good eating ice cream that you re feel refreshed and you'd go back and buy another one. Uh, we mentioned haagen before in the haagen store down the street from Jeff. I'm surprised they're still there because although we put haagen in business with our machine and we put Ben & Jerry in a business and everybody else you can mention, Breyers, Bluebell, Hershey, all of them, um, haagen is 16% at a very low air content and they have a specific market and it's not designed to be a scooping ice cream like Jeff's. It's to be picked at. You buy a pint of haagen and on the way home, uh, ladies, what you don't know is every man on earth, you give him a pint of ice cream and he's driving home, there's teeth marks on that pint. Or like this. And then we smooth it over with our fingers so you don't notice. Um, you have a little bit when you get it, first get it home, a spoonful or so. You have some at dinner. If you're like me at 11 o'clock at night, you have a little spoonful. You pick at it. 
If I gave you a four ounce, which is a quarter pound of ice cream, if I gave you a four ounce portion of haagen in a cone, it's gonna fall to the lower third of the cone. It's so dense and so heavy. And if you go to a lot of haagen stores, of which there's almost none left, because they realized it was a bad marketing idea for them, didn't match what their goal was, which was pints, uh, you see uneaten, uh, uneaten cones. Because it's like going to your favorite uh, Italian restaurant. You go to your favorite Italian restaurant, you eat everything in the place, and then you say, oh, I'm not going back to Luigi's ever again. I am so full. We don't say, I ate too much. We say, oh, that Luigi's. Every time I go there, I feel awful. And then a month later, we go back. Uh, we don't want people feeling awful. So haagen is great to pick at, but it's not a good ice cream to put on a cone. Because first off, it looks too small. Four ounces is just a little tiny thing like this. It's like nuclear, nuclear waste. It's, it's just tiny, but it's powerful. Um, it, it looks too small, you, look like, you feel like you're getting cheated, and it just feels too heavy on your stomach. Doesn't match Jeff's ice cream or my concept, a good eating ice cream that was so good I'm gonna go back and get another. Um, so that's, that's one point about uh, the different fats, but the other is I came down to Florida 13 years ago, and there aren't a lot of ice cream parlors here in comparison to, say, Boston or New York or Chicago. I mean, we have a lot of customers in the, those major cities, but Miami, Tampa, Jacksonville, Tallahassee, I mean, there's a handful of ice cream parlors. They're all mine, but there are just a handful of them. And I thought, why? What's, what's wrong here? What is different about Florida? What's different is it's 95 degrees and 100% humidity. And if you go to a Ruth Chris Steakhouse today for lunch on a normal, typical Florida day, and you eat a 16-ounce uh, sirloin and step out in the parking lot, you're going to drop dead. That's just all there is to it. <laughs> and, and dead people in the parking lot is not good for business. But it makes you feel so full, and, and it can make you sweat from the high fat, and it just makes you feel uncomfortable. So high-fat ice creams leave you feeling uncomfortable in this heat. So what do we do? We run uh, a 10% mix, federal minimum, and um, it's, it's an excellent mix, and we, we counteract that low fat with a lot of flavor because that's what people are eating anyway. As I said earlier in the day, nobody walks out of an ice cream parlor and says, that's the best darn butter fat content I ever ate. They say, wow, that mint chip was really minty, and the chips themselves weren't chalky. We're eating flavor. Uh, so that's how we get away with and why we want to get away with a 10% fat because anything higher in this heat uh, is un uncomfortable. Now I go to Houston or Dallas and I can go to 12%. Uh, percent. I don't think I'd go to 14. They have the heat but they don't have the humidity. Um, but anywhere else, uh, I, I would uh, look at your market and always look at the supermarkets and, and other stores and see what's selling. And try your competition. I mean, uh, when I was growing up, uh, uh, my father used to take us around, and then I do it, but did it with my kids. You know, you get everybody at the vacation location and settled in, and then Dad would go off and look at ice cream parlors. He couldn't help himself. I go and look at supermarkets. I can walk into a supermarket and tell you the ethnic background of the neighborhood, uh, which is important because it tells you what flavors are going to sell and what products are going to sell. Um, so uh, that's why we use a 10%. And, and Jeff can tell you a story uh, while I get this ready about how he had a customer come in who absolutely swore he was running 16. 18%. 18%. You yeah. tell, please it tell was, him that story. It was when I first opened up, and the flavor that I made, my signature flavor, was coconut. And it was really good. And a guy walks in, and you heard this story yesterday. A big, big guy walks in, Hispanic. And he says, uh, he looks up and he says, coconut. I said, okay. And this is what happened. This is a true story. He, he does this and he's standing there. And he looks at me and points his finger and he said, 18. And I said, yeah. And he said, I knew it. And he, he was referring to the fat content of the ice cream. And of course, I used 10. And he looked, he said, 18. And I said, yeah, because it's so smooth and creamy. Just like this was pretty smooth and creamy and rich. And he said, uh, I said, you like it? He said, like it. I sell ice cream throughout the state of Florida. 
and I can put this coconut in 1,500 ice cream parlors starting next week. And I went, whoa, whoa, I'm going to be rich. And he said, just uh, make me 1,000 gallons, and we'll start it out. And, and of course, that was the end of the dream. 1,000 gallons, even Steve's machine, 1,000 gallons, and all those freezers I would need? No. <laughs> But it just goes to show you that, that he was a professional, an ice cream professional, and he looked at me and he swore 18, 18. So nobody knows. These machines, uh, I don't know about other machines, but these machines, you can make it as creamy as you want, as coarse as you want, you can fluff it if you want, you can make any product that you want. Yes, sir. How do I make it creamier? I pull it when it's ready. And I, I do it at a high speed. Your super premium, Steve, that's 234, right? Uh, no, homemade is, uh, homemade is, homemade 234. is 234. Uh, super premium is about 165. I run it at 234, and the very time it's ready. Also, I pull it before Steve pulls it. Uh, I think pulling it sooner gives me a creamer, denser product. So I pull it sooner. Does that hold water, Steve? Yes. OK. Yeah. There you go. And, and I didn't know that, it's just what I saw happen. Pull it quickly, you get a thicker, creamier product. Well, it makes sense, because if you were letting it go, you would be fluffing it more. Fluffing it gives you, <laughs> what a stupid word, fluffing it. Uh, I'm sorry if you're watching. Fluffing it gives you a, a more airy product. And I don't, I don't know why you're fluffing your ice cream. <laughs> Don't do it. Serve the thickest, creamiest, densest product you can. It's ice cream, man. Okay. What are you making? Did you know that the Baptist Church got down on the uh, people in Florida, the, the military, the, uh, you know, the, the government, and said, we want fluffing. Bam. <laughs> There's a ban on fluff. No ban. <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm uh, just rinsing out from when I made the blueberry. What are you making now? I'm going to make a dairy-free ice cream using... Hold on. I'm... Um, this is what you do for love. I'm making avocado ice cream for Paula. Oh, that's Ooh, it sounds horrible. I'll be back. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Take me with you. Take me with you. <laughs> There's two things working against me there. Fat free, or dairy free, and avocado. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a lot about the dairy free in a second. I'm just getting organized here. <laughs> You wouldn't want to help me cut up avocados, would you? Did you try that? Okay, I'm just rinsing out. Um, well, we're going to just scoop them out and throw it in. Scoop them out? I, I checked the records. I haven't made this since 2014. And the reason is, it's of awful. course... <laughs> Ice cream and avocados, it, it just doesn't go. It just screams West Coast Millennials. Right. And that's right. why we're doing it. You know, I'm sorry, I'm a businessman. How I have to these, acquiesce to certain things. How many things. of these babies are you going to use? Uh, I haven't decided yet. Uh, six at least. Two, four, six. The other two are, you know, in the rest of the world, except for uh, in North America, and, um, an avocado is a dessert item. Uh, you get over in Indonesia, and they cut it in half and peel it, yeah, and they put cream on top. We're not in top. Indonesia. I'm just saying, uh, they, put, they put cream on it, so they consider it a dessert. Anybody want to grow a tree? <laughs> <laughs> I know. You want? But well, what can you do with it? You grind it up and you make powder out of it. Ah, I'd like to see that try to grind up in the ninja. We, th we think the ninja is a be-all and end-all, but uh, I think maybe an avocado nut would undo it. Of course, you could take peach nuts, too, and throw in some arsenic. Isn't that what's inside a peach? Mm. It is. Okay. Aren't you impressed that I know how to do this? I am. Somebody taught you well. So, with this being a vegan, what other, like, um, can you just add any other fruit? <laughs> Yeah, what I have found, here, here. thank you, 
What I have found with the dairy free, and we'll get into it a lot here, is uh, I gotta get a smaller spoon. Use the other end. <laughs> That's the thought. I'll be right back. As you can imagine, I'm I'm not part of this discussion. I go the other way. They're all in there excited about avocado. I, don't I know, know you the, are. I don't know the word would be excited. I forgot to put the mix what in. What are you doing with this? It's going right in the machine. I forgot to put the mix in. Steve also made salsa ice cream once. That was good stuff. Should we talk about Sharknado too? <laughs> that has a reputation. Yeah. It, it's been my experience. Whoa. Hello. Okay, now don't try this with a Taylor or a Capizani. I gotta get my spatula. Put that down. I need a spatula. Uh, take mine. Thanks. Maybe a little coconut will help this recipe. Yeah, it won't hurt it. Okay, now turn on the refrigeration. And I'm gonna feed these in here. Avocados don't have much taste, do they? Well, that's why I'm using a lot of them. <laughs> that makes no sense. So the, the, the coconut-based product, the dairy-free, in my opinion, works on every single flavor there is, with one exception, and that is vanilla. Because the vanilla and the coconut background are fighting for world dominance, and, and neither one wins. But if you oh, go to my website, emerythompson.com, oh, uh, you'll see on the front page there is a... Uh, blinking cow crossing sign. Those of you from the Bronx like me, that's a triangle and it blinks on and off and it says, uh, instead like of cow crossing, did. it says dairy free. Look. And those are about six videos that I've made with da different dairy free products. Coffee, ice cream, Oreo cookie, uh, strawberry, uh, all sorts of things. As long as the flavor is a strong background, it works well in the dairy free. Uh, the vanilla is not strong. So um, I, I just, I mean, it was okay, except it had more of a, a coconut taste. But it's all, it's really all about marketing. And as soon as I get all these in here, I'll tell you more about it. You're not calling that dairy-free ice cream? I am calling this dairy-free. Dairy-free ice cream? Yes. It's an illegal term. You can't do this. So let's start with the name first. Um, the product is basically, if I wanted to do this on my own, which I've done, and I did a, a year's worth of recipes, and if, if, if you want to taste awful, they were awful. Um, coconut milk, cream of coconut, like you would use in a bar drink, um, sugar, and water. Well, that sounds like an Italian ice, doesn't it? Except that I'm not using tap water, I'm using coconut water. And it is basically freezing like an Italian ice. Um, so it's got all the buzzwords. It's vegan, cholesterol-free, sodium-free, uh, dairy-free, the, the whole works. Uh, but the problem with calling it vegan is you're narrowing your market. Vegan to me sounds like a 90-year-old man who weighs also 90 pounds, and you look at him and you just say, I wish I could buy you a steak. You know, you, you look so emaciated, I gotta do something to help you. And, and that doesn't sell product. So. Uh, along come the millennials, and let me tell you about the millennials. Um, I have four millennial children, and they are, the age group will change. They'll, they'll redefine it as time goes by as they get older. I'm not going to use that. Thank you. Um, but pretty much it's uh, 21 to 39 years old. And um, 
the biggest group ever to come along was us baby boomers. Uh, they peg us at 1948 to 1962 for having been born. And uh, it goes, it expands and contracts depending on where you are. So that would put at 51, that puts me uh, squarely as a millennial, as a, as a baby boomer. There are 73 million of us baby boomers. And friends of mine who are stockbrokers have tracked us all our lives. When we were 18, we bought used cars. When we were 23, we were getting out of college and we rented apartments. When we were 28 to 30 something, we started getting married. Uh, we then bought a house. We then bought a Dodge Caravan to carry the children. Now we're buying retirement communities uh, from Jimmy Buffett in Daytona Beach. So you could literally, the uh, friends of mine literally tracked us the way Warren Buffett does. Warren Buffett's rule of investing is, I buy what I use. So he buys toothpaste uh, and he buys Colgate Palmolive. He flies on an airplane, he buys net jets. Uh, but that was the concept, and that was the concept of my friends uh, behind the baby boomers, is uh, buy stock in companies of what they use. And as they get older, and he said, you know what's coming, we're going to be buying into funeral parlors because there's going to be 72 of mil a million of you dying off. Well, here come the millennials out of nowhere, and there are 85 million of them way more than the uh, baby boomers. 85 million uh, millennials right now. And that'll go up to 90 or 92 because they'll expand the parameters of the, the age group as people want to get into it and be known as that. Um, and it's a generalization, it's a broad generalization, but for the most part, they don't like dairy. Uh, they don't put milk in their coffee. They buy haagen but they only buy a pint and they won't buy another one for three weeks. Uh, they don't keep ice cream in their freezer. Uh, and again, I'm making broad generaliz generalizations about a whole swath of people. But they're not big fans of dairy. So, along comes uh, this vegan product, and the millennials like that, except the name's bad. So some uh, millennials in Los Angeles changed the name to Dairy Free and called it ice cream. It's absolutely illegal. The federal government says if you're going to call something ice cream, it's got to be 10% uh, or higher. So they're breaking the law. But as I tell them, unless you're a, a big, huge franchise like Ben & Jerry's, they're, going to, they're not going to haul you off to a black site in Yemen and interrogate you for you know, calling it dairy-free. Um, so unless you get up to 50 stores, no one's going to bother calling you dairy-free ice cream. It's, it's a nice term. It rolls off the tongue. Dairy-free ice cream. I, I really like it. And it says what it is. Now, I go and tell my... Uh, Jeff, I'm, uh, Jack, I'm going to go off camera. Um, I tell my friends who have ice cream parlors, like Jeff, and some of these people have been in business for 40 years. They've made a lot of money selling dairy ice cream. And I come along, the upstart, and say, you really ought to also have two flavors, maybe four, of dairy-free. And you'd, you'd think I was talking heresy. I mean, I hear comments like, I ain't selling nothing that doesn't have a cow head on it. And I go, well, fine, how's that eight-track player working in your car? Uh, you know, you got to move with the times. And the thing is, they have this large block of people who come to them day in and day out, year in and year out, and they make a lot of money. They're not noticing that there's another block over here who isn't setting foot in the store. How on earth can you ignore this block of people by not having something that they want? Uh, the other thing along that line is, uh, you and I go to a cocktail party, and uh, I've got a new I iPhone 8. And I say, hey, look, I got a new iPhone 8. And you go, yeah, that's cool, maybe I'll get one sometime. End of conversation between two millennials. Two, uh, between two, um, baby boomers. Two millennials go to an ice cream, uh, to a cocktail party and they say, hey, I just found uh, uh, Jeff's ice cream parlor, Mystic Ice, and he has dairy-free ice cream. Oh, text me the address. And so I text it to you. Uh, you text it to about 20 other people who text it to 20 other people. Before that cocktail party's over, there's 300 people in town that know that Mystic Ice has dairy-free ice cream. Incredible advertising. And you've done absolutely nothing except to have a couple of flavors of this product. 
And it's simple. You've got this giant block of people and the rest of the world is ignoring them. I can go into any city and I'm getting phone calls every day from my customers who listen to me. And they, one guy called up and said, boy, that's the last time I listened to you, Steve. You told me to put two flavors of dairy free into my store. And they're lined up down the street. I said, what's the matter with that? He said, I should have put in four flavors. I'd get even more people. It's just, it's, it, no one, yes, there is one customer who open, is opening up a dairy-free only store in San Francisco. Figures, doesn't it, San Francisco? But the rest of the world, the rest of us, solidly on uh, homemade ice cream, dairy ice cream, but I would also have about four flavors in the same cabinet of dairy-free. Uh, you know, what can it hurt? And, and it'll bring you a large group. And you can say all day long, all day long that you want, uh, I'm not selling anything that doesn't come from a cow. That's fine, but you're missing a group. It, it would be like me saying, oh no, I'm only selling this machine for uh, ice cream. I'm not touching Italian ice. Well, that's what my competitors do. They, they say, there's no market in Italian ice, it's too low class. And say, you should see how many rich people there are selling low class Italian ice. I'm gonna turn this off and pull this out. Certainly a nice color. Let me get a spatula. <laughs> what? He said he could eat that, or you should eat that with a tortilla chip. Yeah, I guess you could. <laughs> and you know what, do I, and, and oh, the other thing about Dairy Free is, I think it'll be fun in the future, and mark this down, it's going to change. Uh, I'll give you an example. Paula's father, uh, like I said, was NYPD, and when I was dating or courting Paula 15 years ago, um, I thought, I'm going to get in with the old man, and I'm going to bring him some of my great ice cream. He wouldn't eat it. He said, no, no, I only have uh, no sugar-added ice cream, and wouldn't touch my ice cream. He would then proceed to go to the freezer, get out the briars, no sugar added, put a big portion into a, a dish, and then pour Smucker's butterscotch sauce all over it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm waiting for the day that the millennials come in and say, can you put some whipped cream on that uh, uh, dairy-free ice cream? <laughs> you know? what, about, what about that segment of the market that doesn't want, that wants sugar-free ice cream? Would you make that also? No, because it's too small. What's too small? The sugar-free Oh, crowd. I, would say, I would say the sugar-free market is much bigger than the dairy-free market. We have different perspectives. Your age group is quite elderly, and mine is, and mine is worldwide. Okay. And worldwide, the dairy-free, I mean, you, you heard it here. And uh, if you ignore it, that's fine. In three years from now, you're going to say, I wish I had listened to Steve, because this is a fad. <laughs> this is a trend. It's a fad. It's not a fad. It's not a fad. Uh, popsicles were a fad, gelato was a fad, uh, um, yogurt was a fad. This will be around forever <laughs> on, because there some. are 85, 80, are you hearing me? 85 million people uh, who want this product. Come on up and try it, we'll see what it's like. Yeah, so? It's not the worst thing I've ever eaten. It's in that category. Though. No, it isn't. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I'm surprised the color is. It's just avocados. from the avocados. No, oh, it's no. just from the avocados. You saw I didn't put anything in there. I know. Very nice color. Try not to eat too much. It's for my wife. Thank you. Come on, you gotta try it. I'll bring you a spoonful. You can speak to everybody. Just, just, Jeff, just a little taste. That's all. Thank you. Coconut milk, coconut water, and water. Oh, I didn't tell you how this, the product's made. Here you go. Here's the formula. I used, rather than me make it myself, I used a product What's called that? Mommy's uh, Powdered uh, uh, Gelato see. Mix. When you start making it, you'll uh, see. It's, it's a dairy-free mix. Let me find a bag of it to show you. That's not a roach, it's a piece of, piece of avocado. This is all pure stuff. This is a powder that you mix with water, which is why I did. One pound to one quart, 
and that's how I got my base. Um, so it's called, uh, it's spelled M-A-M-I-S. Uh, so it looks like Mamie's uh, gelato, but... Uh, the I think he goes Mamie's. He says Mamie's. Well, the, the Italian would be Mamie's. But that tall, skinny kid know. who was here. He, yeah, Nate. Mamie's, right? Nate. And this is at my website. You can call up Nate O'Donnell. He's the vice president, and he'll send you a free bag of this. You know, don't get it if you don't have a machine, because there's nothing you can do with it. But uh, this is what I use. It's just this powder. And... Um, I mean, it's, it's just all pure stuff. It, it's great. It's not coconut flavored. It is coconut. 90% of what's in here is coconut. Can you mix that with water? That's what you do. One pound of that to a quart of water. Yes? Coconut water you're using. No, plain tap water. Plain water. This is all coconut. It turns into coconut. This is all coconut. Oh, okay. Yes? You had a question? No, it's about 25% higher, and normally I don't like two price structures in a store. I think it's confusing, uh, but in this case, since it's a completely different, unique product, not Jeff, he's always the exception. He's getting a very high price for whatever he has, so he can afford to just sell it at this. Six dollars. Six, six dollars. Uh, if, if I was selling for three twenty-five for an ice cream cone, I would charge four twenty-five or four fifty for this, and I would easily get away with it because it's a completely independent product. It's 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 like uh, comparing a hamburger to a steak. Uh, they are both uh, meat beef, but one is is a more expensive process. Well, you than certainly the other. drank the Kool Aid. I believe in this. I know. And I I'm, know. I'm sorry, but I'm making a heck of a lot of money off this. Okay. Because okay. people are buying. I'm telling you. Uh, everything I do is judged on phone calls. Uh, i give, give you an example. Two years ago, Jeff and I were standing up here, and every third phone call was about pasteurizing your own mix. And Jeff wasn't in favor of it. I wasn't in favor of it. It meant that you were going to be in bed with the FDA forever. And guess what? People bought pasteurizers. They're in bed with the FDA forever, and they dropped it because it just was not a tenable situation. Now, the phone calls that I get, I'm not getting any phone calls on gelato. I'm certain, certainly not getting any on yogurt. Uh, but I am getting, uh, if I take 35 calls a day, uh, five to eight of them will be dairy-free. That's a trend. That's, that's a big trend. Don't ignore it. Because you're going to be talking about it three years ago and say, I remember when Steve Thompson talked about this and we poo-pooed it. It's, it's going to be, it is, it's not going to be, it already is huge. Poo -poo. And the rest of the world already has it. Uh, you get into the Far East and this is all they have. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> you get an extra discount. Oh, he has spoken. <laughs> he gets an extra discount on a machine. Jeff, how many people do you have coming after Nobody, because well, his age group I, is 65 get, and older. You know, when, oh, that's, they're the, um, oh, don't listen. They're not millennials. But he's never been here. I get my fair share of younger people also. Yeah. Bull. It's like you said, I welcome children. They just can't come into the store. <laughs> it's all yours, sir. Tell them all the lies you want. I'm going off to... Oh, you don't want the rest. I passed not it gonna, around. Believe me, you're not going to make it. I did. Didn't I pass it over? Do you have... Do you have the stack of recipes over there? See? He was keeping them all for himself to protect these people. Yeah, yeah that size millennials, this size. All right, all, all Jeff's. This is our last flavor of the day. Our last flavor of the day. Wow. Uh, and we need more spoons. Roger, got it. Okay, our last flavor of the day. Uh, how about something with pineapple? <laughs> Uh, I thought we would temper this a little bit. I went to the supermarket last night, and I got uh, no-bake cheesecake, Jello no-bake cheesecake. Uh, so we'll use that. We'll use the rest of the pineapple. However, we'll use coconut also. So we'll actually make um, a pina colada cheesecake. I've never had that. Nobody here has ever had that. Nobody there has ever had that. Pina colada cheesecake. We'll give it a shot, all right? You've certainly had enough where if it's no good, you're not, no loss. It's certainly... All right, so how much mix are we using? Come on. 
Half a bag, which is how much? One quart. Five quarts. Five quarts. Five quarts. Five quarts of mix. Okay, we'll start with five quarts of mix. I don't know that we have five quarts of mix here, but let's see. I think it's, yeah, this is being used by uh, five quarts of mix. Talia, would you do me a favor? And, oh, maybe it's in there. Want to get a bag of mix out of there? Well, it depends when he put it in. Are there boxes of mix in there? Well, I'll tell you what. Close that up. Go to the refrigerator in the kitchen there and bring out one bladder. Uh, this stuff, no big cheesecake. Uh, it comes with two packets inside. You don't think I have cameras and microphones on you? <laughs> I didn't say anything bad. We don't let that anything get by. I didn't say anything bad. Honest. I hid my uh, other vanilla. The good stuff? You're using Thanks. it all up. This is still good stuff. Now, where's the good stuff? <laughs> it's, it's in a vault. <laughs> At $800 a bottle. Yeah. Okay, like five that. quarts. Five quarts of mix. Uh, this is vanilla. Not the good stuff, but pretty good stuff. He doesn't let me have the good stuff. Uh, my, gen my rule of thumb is how much? One ounce to one quart. Five quarts? Five ounces. It's a... Uh, Hmm? Measured out nicely. Ah, you know, you'll believe me, you'll know. Your mother didn't measure the soup either, but she knew. Uh, now, I also thought, you know, I was waiting to see how the last one came out with this stuff. It was okay. It didn't have a chemical taste to it. So we're going to use two of them. One is the pineapple and one is coconut, coconut right. Are you the only one out there? Yeah. We'll use one ounce of pineapple and one ounce of coconut. How do they smell? I, I don't like to smell stuff like that. I will. And I also, when I was uh, in, the, in the market last night, I was looking for more of the frozen concentrated pineapple juice. They didn't have it. But what I did see was pina colada mixer. So that will work, right? That's sort of like what we're doing here. So we'll use both boxes of this. Be damned. <laughs> uh, so we have the mix, the vanilla. We'll throw in this. We have some coconut and some pineapple. That should do it, right? <laughs> All right. So we'll add the mix first. I always put the mix in first. You do too, right? Yeah. Of course. Okay. The mix. Uh, let's throw these in. I hope these are good. They're Bacardi, uh, they're Bacardi mixers, pina colada. Uh, it's, it doesn't have the rum, but it should be what we need, right? Yeah. My mic on? No. <laughs> so we'll add they're, these. They're so overwhelmed from the avocado, they can't speak. <laughs> That's because their jaws are gummed together. <laughs> How was it? <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we're going to add this as we mix it together. The machine will be our mixer. When I first opened the store, I bought a beautiful green KitchenAid stand mixer. And I used that for maybe a year. Then I saw the light. What did I find? 
uh, a paint stirrer at a True paint Value Hardware stirrer. for four dollars, and an electric drill, and an, <laughs> a variable speed electric drill, and that works fine. And then I found the Ninja. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we'll add these, uh, one is cheesecake, one is crust. Add them both? Yeah, of course. Sammy here. And we'll carefully measure them out. Crust. Jello, no bake cheesecake. Oh, I don't know. Pretty good, 11 ounces. But I think they only come in one size box. What a good dog. We call this stealing the show. <laughs> Upstaging. <laughs> yes. Now we'll add some pineapple. And then we'll add some coconut. Hmm? Uh, well, pina colada cheesecake, but the same thing, pineapple, coconut. Jeff, I was going to buy some coconut the other day. Uh, are the coconut chips, are they sweetened? Or are they some are, some aren't. How are the sweetened ones? Are they good? That's what we're using today. Okay. They're, and they're fine. Do they're they get sweet. mushy in the ice cream? Uh, they're still stringy. You'll see. There's, okay. you know, but they're good. You can't really avoid it. You know, they are what they are. Yes. So, you can change the power on that one, correct? The uh, CB200 can be purchased either in... 110 volt or 220. So, that No, they're identical because uh, Copeland, the, the world's best compressors, which are made in Ohio, build us a special compressor and it has the same speci specifications as the, two, the 220 volts between one and 115. Exactly the same. I, I brought... I, I brought it out because many of the millennials uh, will form a corporation in their kitchen and one person will be the CEO, the other will be the CFO, the other will be the president, another will be the chief operations officer. Uh, they don't have a business but they have the titles. And uh, they actually buy that machine and the smaller one so that they can practice for a year or two before deciding to go into business. If you listen to Jeff and you've been in his class for two days, he's wondering why you aren't in business yet. And I'm the same way. I just say, just do it. Everybody have a coconut allergy? Anybody have a, an allergy to coconut? Is there such a thing? I don't know. There's nut allergies, right? Oh, yeah, Those yeah. Those nuts who have allergies? Yeah. It's real, too. I have a sign over there of uh, Mr. Peanut choking. Okay, did we, we get everything? Down. Did I they miss anything? Bite you. Her heart's pounding. The, yeah, no, we wouldn't. What was that? If you use blueberry. Yeah, I, I've made blueberry cheesecake, apple cheesecake, peach cheesecake, and cherry cheesecake at the store. Easy. No, 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 no. And if the pineapple were in heavy syrup like it used to be, I wouldn't have to add anything either. Okay, we ready? There you uh, go. <laughs> All right. Now we do have some more if you think we ought to. No. Yes, more, more. Okay, so you, you get 
you get that the philosophy is just go to the supermarket and buy stuff, right? That's, that's really the deal. That's what I profess, to go to the supermarket and buy stuff. Have you ever put cream cheese in here? Cream cheese? Yes, I have. Uh, when I first made the cheesecake, I thought, we better add another bar of cream cheese in there. And I took a Philly brick and threw it in. It was fine. It was creamy. This stuff's pretty good. I don't know how the Walmart cheesecake mix would be. That's 80 cents cheaper. But I know this is pretty good. This is Jell-O brand no-bake cheesecake. And if you, t I should have done it, but if you taste that white powder, it tastes just like cheesecake. Have you ever made um, cookie dough? No. Me neither. I'm afraid to. Because of the raw? Yeah. You can make it and then it's okay? Okay. Maybe I'll try that next time. Okay, I guess we're ready to roll here, aren't we? Let's put it in. We're running down on time, so if you have questions, please ask them. Because unlike that other guy who charges $300 for seven questions or whatever, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. We read the promo yesterday in class. That's. Who is it? Well, is it Steve? I don't want to say. Is it Steve? Um, we're not using names. All right, I'll find. You can you can get six hundred dollars, which will allow you to ask questions for six three months. Three months. Now you can get twenty minutes of uninterrupted conversation for two hundred dollars. I'll see you off, Mike. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's unbelievable. I have it printed out. I do that for free from five thirty in the morning till ten at night. Of course. I'm not always do. right, but at least you get an answer. <laughs> so from now on, Talia, any questions, you pay for. You've had your allotment. <laughs> okay, we have more spoons. Uh, hey, Jack. Right behind you. Right behind you. Oh, no, that's um, not dry milk. Would you ask Crystal to bring in uh, a couple of boxes of spoons that are in the kitchen? Thank you. All right. And Sammy would like a steak. Look how good Sammy's being, huh? 69 pounds. How? What? 69 pounds. Lap dog. <laughs> <laughs> Lap dog. So this is the last ice cream we're making. Any, uh, and we started, as you know, with the lighter stuff, the Italian ices, the sherbets, and then we work our way up to the ice creams and stuff like that. Avocado. Uh, you liked it, huh? Well, that's a quick way to go broke anyway. You don't have to wait long. <laughs> I figure four months, you're done. <laughs> those dudes, those two guys, they sell avocado ice cream. Let's go over here. Let's go to Jeff's place. He sells toasted pineapple ice cream. Uh, what else? Anything else? I've been asking him that for five years. What gel paste? All those. Underneath the sign that says cream, it says gel. Those are. Pre gel, uh, pre gel. Oh, we don't mention that. Okay, we don't uh, talk they're about Ital it. It's Italian flavors. Okay. And. That's more for the gelato. Yeah, my favorite company is a company called Fabri in Bologna, Italy. They started in 1905, the same year we did. And uh, Mrs. Fabri was. Everybody was raving about her jams and jellies and that she would put up in a jar and she turned it into a business. And it's the best Italian flavor house uh, in the world. It's great stuff, uh, just great stuff if you're making gelato. Huh, cheesecake. Yeah, we talked about the coffee flavoring, like Monin and Sperani. Can you use those in the Italian ice flavoring? Sure, you could. And underneath there, like that freezer or their table next to it, they have all of the molded flavors. You flavor your Italian You can use any flavor if you want. Just keep in mind that uh, instead of your base being uh, dairy, which has taste, uh, your base in an Italian ice is water. So there's no taste there. 
So you're going to need at least twice as much flavor to do an Italian ice as you would an ice cream. Uh, so yeah, you can use anything. You can invent any flavor you want. Just make I'd keep the same sugar water, uh, but I would, uh, you know, alter the flavor. And again, mix it up and taste it before you run it. And if it tastes bland when you taste it there, it's going to taste bland when it comes out. So make the exception. And I didn't do that in the last class that we had. And I think I made a uh, either a ra I think I made a raspberry Italian ice with something else in it. And we all tasted it in class and agreed that it needed. Uh, two things. Number one, another pound of sugar, and number two, uh, more flavor. Uh, sugar oftentimes will enhance the flavor of an Italian ice without making it sweeter. You know, when you're talking the bigger machines and you're putting in seven or eight pounds of sugar, another pound is not going to make it sweeter, but it will bring out the flavor. It'll enhance it. It'll bloom? It'll, no, it won't bloom. It'll burst. <laughs> I don't make it. I'm a, di I'm a type 1 diabetic. I'm wearing an insulin pump on my arm here that you can't see. And um, we're a very vocal group, and we're relatively small, and we're annoying because we come in and we complain that you don't have uh, sugar-free ice cream. So you get two flavors, and there aren't that many people buying it, so it gets old and crummy looking. And then you complain, those are the same two flavors you had six months ago. I want more flavors. There aren't enough of you to make it worthwhile. I know I shouldn't be buying ice cream. I shouldn't be in your store. I am going to cheat. So put up a little sign that says, Dear Diabetic, you shouldn't cheat, but when you do, come here. You know, it's, it's a takeoff on if you're going to drive the old man to drink, drive him here. <laughs> but the problem with the sugar-free is they have to use a modified food starch, I call it a chemical, called multidextrin. And if you go and buy some sugar-free candies, sugar-free chocolate, and it will say on the package, eat only one or two at a time. So oh, yeah. I eat I'm the whole sorry. bag, and then I wonder why I've got Montezuma's Revenge, because uh, multidextrin will give you acute gastritis, to say it politely. Uh, so I, there's no positives to it. Yeah, they... Well, let me put her down and I'll get the rainbow maker. And I just found my other tub, Jeff, that I wanted to show. So, Sammy, I'm going to put you down. And if you walk off, I'm going to have to take you to Paula. OK. So, OK, come here. Come here. Down. Down. You know what to do. <laughs> down. Down. Stay. Good girl. Stay. Um, let me get a rainbow maker. This was a test version of one. It's not the full size. But the idea is you have two or three of these. Um, excuse me. Sit. Down. Good girl. You have two or three or four of these. And so you're making a batch first of lemon. And you have it in there, and you put the lemon into one corner. And then you make another batch, and you put the uh, strawberry sure. or raspberry into that corner and fill up three or four of these. And then you make a blueberry and fill up that section. Then when you've made all three flavors, you pull this out. You've got three flavors and you scoop in a circular motion, red, white, and blue. So you wouldn't want to do it with just one, but if you had four of them, uh, depending on the size of the machines, that's how you would do it. Superman ice cream. Yes, exactly. Superman ice cream. Now red, the other thing. Yellow and blue. Good girl. Stay there. Uh, I know. It's too exciting. Mm -hmm. Banana and grapes. Banana and grapes? Beetlejuice. This is what we were talking about for uh, using a push cart. Um, if, you're wear, if you're wearing black, she'll come right to you because you're going to have blonde hair all over you. <laughs> she knows. Um, you make your Italian, you take this. This is a double walled tub and it's got glycol in it. So we take this, we put it in the freezer and let it freeze overnight, rock solid. And then we make, take our tub of Italian ice out of the freezer, just drop it in there, and that's our refrigeration system for the day. 
Uh, I've tested it with Italian ice. It's good for about six hours. No cover. 80, 85. No cover needed. I, I, I put some saran wrap over it. Uh, hey, 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 Sammy. Check. <laughs> yeah, look at her smile. She's laughing. I'm like, yeah, sure. Just let me, let me, let me add it. I know. Oh, well, I'm not going to break up this love affair. <laughs> um, so that's a very inexpensive way to do a push cart. These are about $85. They're made by a company called Carlisle. And um, it's, uh, you can find them all over the internet. Uh, Web Restaurant Store has it. What are they called? Well, yes, Webstaurant. Yeah, any of you looking for the Web Restaurant Store, you're not going to find it. It's, uh, they thought they'd be cute, and they named themselves Webstaurant. W-E-B-S-T-R-A-U-N-T. Webstaurant.com. And they've got everything in small quantities. If I'm going to the Italian ice business, I'm buying 200 of these, so I'm going direct to the manufacturer. If I'm buying uh, 20 of these, I'm going to Webstaurant and, and buy 20 of them. Why That's simple. Like those They're cheaper. That's why. They're all going to wear out in a year and a half to two years, so I'm buying this on price. Uh, Jeff's going to use his forever, and they'll last forever. These will break up in a couple of years. So, but this is $1.25. So it's a it's a good. I do. Yeah, everybody does. Absolutely. You can't use Cambro in there because the Cambro have the handles built in. So yeah, you definitely you sanitize everything. The black thing. The black thing. Um, ice cream server. It's called an ice cream server. They'll show a picture of a lady with an apron. And I don't know. <laughs> and it's made by Carlisle. Is she going to bother you? Okay. <laughs> She's everybody's best friend. She's really making the circuit. Um, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. No, we're, we're almost done. Anybody else? Any questions on ices? Good. Now, I, I do have to say that I just tasted this. The coconut that we used was old coconut from Steve and it didn't declump totally. Oh. So there will be some coconut clumps in there, which is not a bad thing, but they're not bugs. Sammy, no, don't jump up on them. Steve? Nobody's allergic to, to coconut. No, because there's very little left in the machine, but the last thing in there was coconut, which is neutral. No one is allergic to it uh, that I know of, and you're just filling it up with dairy. When in doubt, just throw in a couple of uh, a few quarts of water, slosh it around for 10 seconds, and drain it out. Then like you'll be good to go. what we would do if we were going from something with raisins to something with coconut? Just one rinse. One of those... One of those uh, three-gallon uh, tubs. It's underneath. Where'd it go? It's down there. One of those, and once as a rinse, and that's fine. Okay, let's see what that's we got. Fine. Oh, this is heavy. That's a heavy ice cream. Uh, let's see what else it means. If she's bothering anybody, let me know. I'll take her out. One second, tell you. Ever what? <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, okay, if you want to dare try this, be my guest. It is the last ice cream of the day. 
Well, look who's first. <laughs> and what is this? This is pina colada cheesecake. Or, as Abby said better, it's pineapple coconut cheesecake. Uh, no, she's got a sensitive stomach. We give her just strictly dog food. <laughs> oh, thank you. I had nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> or avocados. And the irony is our first golden retriever, which was my first dog then ever, we'd have some. we had for many, many years. And she came out of uh, uh, Boston, out of an AKC uh, place in Boston. And Sammy came out of New York, and it was only uh, a year and a half later, we got some paperwork from the AKC, and the other dog, our first dog, was listed uh, on the paperwork. So she is a great, great granddaughter of our first well, dog, this a little and longer, two different states. It, it makes sense too. because the one up we'll in Boston, decide. she was an AKC judge, Not and so important. when the lady with a lot of money down in New York decided she was going to raise Goldens on her farm, she went right, like I did, went right, right. to the top. And, and there, you know, it just made my wife so happy. All your questions <laughs> are dumb anyway. Yeah. 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 Steve, what Come on, speak up. up right now. Oh, we're done now? We're done now. Well, it's, oh, now it's only important for yes. how you I'm like gonna it. I'm going to take Sammy, like and the then sugar. I'm going to take everyone around. You want more sugar? Ready there, sweetie? Come on. Add more sugar. Good girl. You want to pull this a little softer? Pull it a little softer? She is. I think the flavor is good, but the coconut's hard, isn't it? So well behaved. The flavor is good. You know what I get? I get an aftertaste of cheesecake crust. Yeah, maybe graham cracker. But it is creamy. I don't know if I have a lot of the cheesecake flavor. Very smooth. Yeah. Mmm. You want to tell Crystal uh, we got it for her? Mm -hmm. Small portion? <laughs> After this, you got to run around the block. Mm. Well, so much for the pineapple. I'm even going to leave this here. Who knows what will be next time. I do have a couple of cans of apple filling, apple pie filling. By the way, good, good quick recipe. We talked about it yesterday. If you're in the store, a, a, a number 10 cans, those big cans of, well, any size can, of banana pudding, and all you need to do is take the banana pudding, add it to the mix, and your flavor ice cream is banana cream pie. Mm. And it's extraordinary. It's really excellent. Two ingredients. What? Vanilla wafers, yeah. It's just two ingredients. I mean, what could be simpler? I have some more for you. And what's this called, Jeff? This is called... Um, what? Pina colada cheesecake. Okay. Banana pudding and mix. And you, you call it banana cream pie. I do the same thing with key lime pie filling. And I, I, I add a few more little things, but basically it's key lime pie filling and mix. 
and you call it key lime pie. And you can get that recipe in your book? You right? bet you can. It's in there. Pumpkin, you have to be careful because there's fresh pumpkin in a can and there's sweetened pumpkin pie filling in a can. I prefer to use the, the, nat the fresh pumpkin in the can and then I add my molasses or brown sugar or whatever. But all those, th that's why supermarketing is great because all the things you know about are right there up the aisles. So just walk up and down the aisles and if you want any inspiration, Go to the Jello aisle. There's 200 flavors of Jello there, and each one of them will make you ice cream. Whether it's a kiwi strawberry or, or whatever, just look at those boxes and get all the flavors you want. The, one, the small ones. What's that? I was just telling you what containers to put them in. Okay. Last shot, Jeff disappears. As soon as uh, Jeff over, disappears. And I'm going to take you on uh, tour of the factory. And you're going to go for a tour of the factory. Some people never come back from that. No, they don't. No. <laughs> they ask too many questions. They They're end up in the dumpster. In there. They're in the dumpster. <laughs> They're wandering around. How do I get it? coils and sheet aluminum? And thank you all very much. Thank You've you been very a, much. A very spirited audience. Jeff, great job. <laughs> so follow me. You can leave your stuff here. You can bring your ice cream if you want, if you have any. Okay.